Nobody does NASCAR in Riverside quite like us. Fox Sports 1350. We're mobile. Take Fox Sports 1350 with you using iHeartRadio. Now live from Etiwanda High School located in Rancho Cucamonga, it's Coach B, Andy Turner with Fox Sports 1350 High School Game of the Week. And we're coming to you from the brand new Eagle Stadium located on the campus of Etiwanda High School in Rancho Cucamonga. It's tonight's Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week along with IE Sports Net. My co-host, Eddie Eternal Talbert, I am Coach B. And Eternal, we got a big game going on tonight. Very big game, Coach B. Baseline league game. Have the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars coming in uh, out here to Fontana today. Got a chance to the talk Rancho to Rancho Cucamonga. What did I say? Fontana. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. You know, because cause it's, it's a Stones, you know, that, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on involved with that, but you're right. We're in, we're in a great city of Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, got a chance to talk to both coaches. Uh, interesting thing that happened right here. It looks like they, they were kicking the ball off, and somehow they got the ball back. So, at a one, it looks like they onside kicked, and they were able to get it. So, with 11 minutes and 57 seconds to go, Etiwanda was successful in an onside kick, and they have the ball in, in great, great field position. They have the 27-yard 20, the, the line. They hand the ball off to number five, Kashmir Dina. He runs off tackle. It was a handoff by the starting quarterback, number 14, and that's Tommy McDonald. So Etiwanda is in business. Yeah, and Tommy McDonald's coming into this game, Coach B, you know, uh, again, you know, last week we saw there's a, you know, there's a, a couple, like a two-quarterback system. You have Hamill, and then you also have McDonald. But, again, we're gonna, it looks like McDonald's going to get the start tonight. He's coming into the game, Coach B, you know, with 657 yards. Let's see what he can get done against these Cougars. So we're looking at second and six from the 23-yard line, and 11 minutes and 24 seconds to go. Etiwanda is in the true shotgun. You have three receivers left, two receivers to your right. McDonald's in the backfield by himself in the shotgun, and he's looking back, and he's looking. He's firing. Oh, it was tipped, and that was a dangerous pass. He was targeting numbers. It looks like number six. Uh, so that was a dangerous pass right there to get tipped up in the air. That could have easily been an interception. Without a doubt, Coach B, those are the things you want to kind of prevent, uh, especially early in the game. They've already had some success, and right here is a, a, an area right here. If I'm Coach Davis and I know about you know this, this very talented uh, Rancho Cucamonga team, you want to capitalize right here. Absolutely. So, Ed Wanda, you talk about some, some great field position, third and six from Rancho Cucamonga's 23-yard line with 11 minutes and 12 seconds to go. This is one. They have three receivers to your left, one to your right. McDonald hands it off to Cash Dealer. He runs a stretch play, and he's trying to get to that edge. And, boy, is Rancho Cucamonga fast. On that play, it looks like Cash Dealer may have picked up about two or three yards. So now you're looking at fourth and about four. Yeah, it's a long, you know, yeah, a long four yards, Coach B. Uh, and, and, again, you know, we're going to see tonight, you know, running east and west against these Cougars might not be the best idea just because of how athletically gifted they are um, totality-wise. Uh, but, again, we have the hardest working man for the, uh, for the Eagles on the field right now, Coach. Number 77, Diego Garcia. Coach Davis, he decided he made that choice quick. We're going to go for three, and it is up, and the field goal That's is good. good. So, Etiwanda is in the lead. 3-0 to zero against these Rancho Cucamonga uh, Cougars. And just to give you an idea, Etiwanda was going north on your radio dial here from Eagle Stadium on the campus of Etiwanda High School. Etiwanda is wearing their home black jerseys with the gold trim numerals, and they're wearing some black pants. So that's something new. They, they normally wear red pants, so it's a blackout. Tonight. It's a blackout game, and we, uh, we saw that. Uh, you know, one, one, on, a, on a positive note, what I did see, don't know, don't know how much we're going to get a chance to see, but I did see Sark, uh, Starks. Uh, one of the star running backs uh, for the Eagles. I saw him suit up tonight. Don't know how much he's going to play, but he is suited up at least, which, so, is, which is positive for the Eagles. So Etiwanda has all black on their jerseys and their pants, and Rancho Cucamonga has the visiting uniforms, which are the light uniforms, all white, and they're trimmed in purple. So Etiwanda is ready to kick off the ball after going up 3-0 with 10 minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. Diego Star Garcia, who just kicked the field goal, is ready to kick the ball deep. So let's see if they'll try to get this ball again. And he kind of pops it up. And that's, and that's a good thing to do. And, and it is received by number four from Rancho. And he has a seam. And he is getting, he's at the 30, 35, 40. 40, uh, he gets to almost the 45-yard line. And number four, that's going to be Tyree Baker for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. And if you look at that punt, it looks like what Coach Davis is trying to do is keep the ball away from number five, which is Jalen Reed, a special running back that's committed to the University of Oregon. Yeah, and we're going to see a lot of Mr. Reed. You know, they, you know, again, 
what you want to do as a coach is find a way to get the ball to your talent. And my goodness, this kid is a very special talent. So Rancho Cucamonga is going to come out in a full uh, they're going to come out in the spread formation, two receivers to your right, one to your left. You Actually, you have an H back in the backfield with the quarterback as well, so they're going to hand the ball off. And we talked about this, the number five, Jalen, he gets five yards. He gets 10 yards, 50, 20. No, is anyone going to catch him? And they get him out. He picked up about 25 yards in, the, in a split second. I mean, Coach B, the way his feet are moving, he is, he's just as advertised. I mean, this kid, is, he's special. I mean, you know, winning the hole, made two moves, on a couple of Etiwanda Eagle players, and he was out of there. Indeed he was. So the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes are once again setting up. They have the quarterback in the backfield, and he hands it off once again to Jalen Reese, and he gets stopped this time in the backfield, and their quarterback is going to be number 10, Nick Acosta, of course. Yes, indeed. And what a great play uh, by number 17 uh, for the Etiwanda Eagles, which is going to be Jerome Wilson. And Jerome Wilson is a DB, sophomore DB, came in there and made a great play on, uh, on, on uh, Mr. Jalen. And that's the way to respond. So now you're looking at second and 10 with nine minutes and 47 seconds to go. And Etiwanda, it hands it off once again to Jalen Reed. He picks up, and on that play, he picked up about seven yards for the yards that he stopped. And, I, I, and this is what we said before the game. This guy is special. Coach B, it looks like the, the kid is roller skating and everybody else is running barefoot. I mean, I mean, this kid is, I mean, he is very, very fast. Uh, you know, again, but like, but like you were saying, Coach B, you know, you have the junior Nick Acosta at quarterback. So let's see what happens here. So you're looking at third and six, and they're in the shotgun. Oh, they hand it off to Jalen Reed. He bounces to the outside, five, ten. He picks up about 20 yards on a third and six from the 29. What and a move. Rancho Cucamonga is in business. So now they're almost in the red zone just like that. Coach B, he made a move on the outside. Uh, the, uh, he left, a, I mean, put a move on the outside linebacker. I mean, I, and I know the linebacker is, is hoping he never has to see that play ever again. So you're looking at shotgun again, Acosta and Reeder in the backfield. You have one receiver to your left, and he hands it off to Reed, and he dances in the backfield. He picks up about four or five yards. Interesting thing about uh, Jalen Reed, he didn't start the year off at running back. He was moved to the running back position, and you can see why. He must have done some special things in practice. Well, Coach B, he's coming into the game with 118 carries over 1,000 yards rushing and averaging roughly about 151 yards a game. And you have Acosta in the backfield, and they, they just changed quarterback. So Sean Dollar, so they gave Acosta, uh, they gave, I'm sorry, Reed uh, a break, and they're going to give it off to Sean Dollar. And he gets stopped in the backfield for a big stop for the Etiwanda Eagles. So it looks like that was Nate Neal in there. That was, that was a team captain, Nate Neal, Coach B. And I see it looks like Gutierrez was there to assist him yes. on that play as well. Yes, indeed. So you're looking now, so it's, it's third and five, and you, you, they took Jalen out, so they have him, uh, the, the, uh, the substitute for him, Sean Dollar, is out in the back, but he's only a sophomore. So they're in the shotgun, and they hand it off to Sean Dollar, and he finds his seam, and he goes a power right up the gut. It was a dive, and just like that, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars go up 63 with seven minutes, 56 seconds to go. Wow, what a play. You just went right up the middle, Coach B. And, and, you know, and you were saying with the running, we know with the change of running back, but it looked like the line was able to make a really good hole, and the running back had no problem getting through for roughly about 15 yards on the run. Indeed, and when you look at that, and now they're going to go for that extra point. When you have a line like Rancho Cucamonga's line that can just bully the defense down the field like yeah, that. Yeah, and, that, and that's, that's where it all starts, Coach B. You know, we, obviously, we've talked a lot in this series about the running back position. But the truth of, in the reality of the situation is that all starts up front. Indeed. Indeed it does. So with seven minutes and 56 seconds ago in the first quarter, Etiwanda uh, went on the board first three, uh, with the field goal by Diego Garcia, and Etiwanda said, what we're going to do is we're just going to respond. Well, and, and that's what I think Coach Davis was worried about uh, early. And so, you know, and again, which is why he's pooped kicking uh, right now. Not, he's making sure that he's not getting the kick out to the distance to those special players uh, on the Rancho Cucamonga high school team. And when you see that drive, when you think about what Jalen Reed did on that side, on that drive, you can see why, like you said, Coach Davis doesn't want to get the ball in his hands. Oh, for good reason. For Indeed. good reason. Indeed. So you have your Etiwanda Eagles, they're back, they're deep, they're getting ready to return the punt. And they and deep they for the uh, for your Etiwanda Eagles, they're gonna be heading north on your radio dial. Uh, back in the backfield, it looks like we have number six, and we have, and number six is going to be Andre Grayson. And, and also uh, number, 
Number 82 is back there as well, Coach. And to receive that ball was number 55, and he gets the ball, and he wants to run. He said, my number's 55. I'm going to get it. I'm going to run. And that's going to be Save Watson who gets that play. And, and just a note, we want to say that uh, Save last week, his grandmother let us know that his name was backwards. So yes. it's Save Watson, not Watson Save. <laughs> so so yes, we want to make sure we say her, his name correct. Right. And, so, and thank you kindly. Indeed, indeed. Hey, we're here. We're, we're here every day. You can find us up in the booth. <laughs> so Etiwanda will be starting at their own 40-yard line, first and 10 with 7 minutes and 51 seconds to go here from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium. McDonald's in the backfield, two receivers to his right, two to his left. He hands it off to number five, and that's going to be Cashmere. He's dancing in the backfield, and he picks up about one or two yards. I'll tell you this. You saw him for our radio listeners. He kind of danced in the backfield looking for a scene. With Rancho Speed, does he have time to do that? I don't know that he has time to do that, Coach Green. That's a really good point there because, again, right now with Rancho, with, they're, they're going to be coming up the middle, and they're going to be shooting the gaps very aggressive. So you're going to have to make a point. You're going to have to find a hole, and you're going to have to just live with and that. Live or die with that, exactly. with that hole. I know that so about it. He picked up about a yard on first down, so you're looking at second at nine. They're now at the 41-yard line with seven minutes and 17 seconds to go for your Etiwanda Eagles. They are in their own territory, but they're, they're itching to get to that 50-yard line. McDonald's in the backfield. Oh, dropped the ball. And it looks like that was a missed timing with the, the quarterback and the center. Uh, and it looks like Etiwanda was able Ooh. to get back on that ball. And, yeah. boy, that was scary. Yeah, McDonald, he dropped, he, he uh, got out of that center. And, you know, and we saw that last week, Coach B. There were some issues with the center and quarterback exchange. Um, obviously something that you want to get fixed up pretty quickly, Coach B, especially coming in here facing the talent at Cooperstown. So you're looking at third and about 12 yards on this play. The ball is at the 39-yard line for the Etiwanda Eagles. McDonald is in the backfield, and once again, he has number five, Kashmir Dina, in the backfield with him. He has two receivers to his right. No, three receivers to his right, one to his left. He's in the shotgun, and he pa- he fakes it, takes the dive, and he passes it, and he picks up about five. Oh, the oh, ball is loose. Oh, the ball goodness. is loose. So we'll see who, ca- who comes out of the hole with that. Uh, I see the Rancho, Rancho kids standing it. there. Yeah. And it is. And it is Rancho Cucamonga. He got, well, you know, when you're making a, a, a quick note to the young kids, when you're making these moves and you're spinning with, with the ball, you have to hold on to the ball because you're very open to getting hit. And that's what happened there. He made a good, he made a good football move, spun, but the ball was not, the ball was exposed and he got hit, gave the ball up. And it reminds me of when Tiki Barber, Barber was with the Giants and his coach said high and tight. Yeah. High and tight. Or, or when you're going well, into the hole, just, two hands on the ball. I was just about to say, when you're coming into contact, two hands on the football. So six minutes, 15 seconds to go. Rancho has the ball again. Acosta's in the shotgun. He's looking deep. He's going over the top. And Damn, he has wow. the receiver wide open. And he hits number oh, 13 my. for Rancho Cucamonga. And it's going to be Javon. Javon. Uh, Javon Lofton. Yeah, so, and Mr. Lofton was, t- I mean, Coach B, he had enough time to uh, put a post to Instagram photo. I mean, right. my goodness, he was out there just wide open. So, obviously, a defensive uh, misstep right there. Indeed. So, you're looking at six minutes and 12 seconds ago, and Rancho has now go- gone up 13-3 to on a wide open pass. So, now they're going for the extra point on that. And Lawson is the number one receiver, Coach B. He's a senior coming into the game with 360 yards, averaging 20 yards, on a catch, four touchdowns this year, make it five. And the extra point, the extra point is good. So you're looking at Rancho Cucamonga is now going to be 14-3 to three on that. So with six minutes and 12 seconds to go, Rancho Cucamonga's come out. They're firing on all cylinders tonight. No doubt about it, Coach B. And, again, right now, two quick points. Uh, you know, and, I mean, you, you look at it, six minutes left to go in the first quarter. This could be a very, this could be a microcosm for what you're going to see going forward here, Coach B. Indeed, and 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 when you look at the iesportsnet.com 11 man football poll, there's a reason these Rancho Cucamonga Cougars are ranked number two in our poll. Number two, undefeated on the season, uh, two and zero in baseline league right now, Coach B. These guys are special. Last week beat their arch nemesis Upland uh, handily. And, and, yes, <laughs> indeed. So that was a big, big momentum swift shift for them. When you think of the control in the baseline lane and that punt uh, on the kickoff, it went into the end zone. So Etiwanda will take the ball starting at the 20-yard line with six minutes and 12 seconds to go. So when you think about that game last week, uh, Rancho, that, that's been a thorn in their side. They've had a lot of years, and they've been good, and they're supposed to be the team, and they just couldn't get over that hump. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and they finally did it, but you can see that just – Top to bottom, Coach B, they are a force to be reckoned with. Indeed. From the offensive side and the defensive side, this is a complete, complete team. So six minutes, 12 minutes ago, like we said, uh, Etiwanda now trails 13, uh, sorry, 14 to 3, and that, and that was a high snap. So McDonald, he takes off, and he's running in the backfield. And McDonald, it looks like he was dropped for a sack. So it looks like McDonald lost about uh, three yards or so on that play. Having some problem with the snap again, Coach B. I mean, they're, they're, you know, that's the second time that I've seen the night, at least. Uh, the, the, the snap has been high. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the Cougars coming in there like that, you don't really give your quarterback a lot of wiggle room with that move at all. Exactly. So you're looking at five minutes and 44 seconds to go on, on the clock. So, so Etiwanda is now – is now you're looking at second down and about 12 to go on the play. Tommy McDonald's in the backfield. He has Cashmere Dean in the backfield with him. He has three receivers to his right, one to his left, and he's looking deep. And Tommy's going over the top, and that was almost intercepted on that play. And he was targeting, it looks like, number six, and that would be uh, Andre Grayson. And that was number eight. Uh, number eight. I, I well, no, apologize. No, 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 excuse me. I was saying number eight on for the rancher for Aaron Lewis on, on the defensive play was really baiting the quarterback mm-hmm. in right there. Mm-hmm. And one thing that, you know, we know about uh, Rancho Cucamonga is they are special and they have a lot of special players at the DB position. So that's third and 12 for your Etiwanda Eagles. And you know when you say baiting them, that reminds me of one guy that would do that best, prime time. <laughs> he, would, he would sit there and, and, and dare you to throw it in. Yeah, way. and just had that really quick uh, get-off speed, you know, like, you know, uh, which, you know that – that 40 time kind of speed that just, you know, you can accelerate that. So they're in the gun, two receivers to your right, two receivers to your left, and Cash Virginia in the backfield, and, and it was a read option, and McDonald kept it, and on that play, it looks like McDonald picked up maybe two yards on that play. So you're looking at with the ball spotted at their own 19 yard line, Coach Davis decides to send out Diego Garcia, number 77, and he's going to punt this away. But on the other, that's, you know, when you think about it, on the sitting there waiting to get that ball is going to be number five, Jalen Reed, and number eleven, Thomas Graham Jr. And Thomas Graham, if you remember, he was one of our preseason top five players in the entire Inland Valley. Yes, and yes, indeed. Our Inland Empire, I should yeah, say. Inland Diego Empire, with a yeah. booming punt, and the ball is it calls for a fail. Jalen calls. It takes a, a rancho bounce. Oh, no. It bounces. It it lands at oh. the fifty and bounces <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Uh, to about the, it looks like they're going to spot that at about the 40-yard line. So it, it took a definite rancho bounce. Yeah. It landed at the 50 and bounced back to the 40. Yeah, that's one of those things right there where you have to, you kind of got to be wise. Like when you're out there playing uh, you kick I mean, on, on, on special teams, more over on punt, you have to kind of have the ball in your peripheral vision. Indeed. So that way you can make a play on it because you, you have to really understand, hey, what's going to happen here with the kick. So rancho is in business. So they are already in Etiwanda's territory, and they're going to start at the 40-yard line. So Acosta's in the backfield. He has Jalen Reed back there with him, and he has two receivers to his right, and he hands the ball off to who else? To Jalen Reed. And this is one thing about Jalen Reed. When you look at his measurables, Jalen Reed, he's a, he, he stands about 180 pounds, but he went – that was a dive up the middle. Yeah, and he's not afraid to go up the middle, which is why I'm sure uh, the uh, head coach, uh, Baez – am I saying that? Nick Baez, yes. Uh, head coach Bias is really excited about this young man. Again, Coach B, I mean the kid has 15 touchdowns on the year, and now Acosta is, is he doesn't he oh. pitches the ball to number four for Rancho. That's and gonna that's gonna be Tyree Baker right there, Coach B. He's a senior, 165, coming into the game, ready to go today. And and and, and I I tell you, we I'll say it again, Acosta and these. Uh, these Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, they are firing on all cylinders. The ball now is spotted on the 19-yard line. So you're looking at, you're looking at a first and 10 for these, for these Cougars. Excuse me, it's on the 14-yard line. And it looks like they may have got Etta wanted to jump. They hard count them, and it looks like they got them to, to jump. Yeah, and uh, in a, just a quick note, like Tyree Baker, again, I mean, they're very, very deep at the receiver position. He's coming into the game right now, Coach, being 131 yards, uh, averaging roughly about 10 yards on the catch. That was a really good catch there. On top, was able to bring it down. And it was a direct snap to Reed, and Reed takes it. He was in the shotgun, and Reed went right up the middle again and picked up about four yards on that play. Yeah, this kid is uh, – he's I – mean, I mean, he's doing it all for him today. And uh, he's, he hasn't scored yet, Coach B, but he's doing just enough to get him in scoring position. Indeed, indeed. And they have him back there again in the Wildcats. He's in the gun. He, he's back there. It is a direct snap to him, and he just goes wow. right up the middle. And then once again, 
he scores a touchdown. And Coach B, that you know, what's, what's crazy about that, Coach B, is the Eagles had players there. He was just able to get by them with just natural gifted speed. When you've got that much speed, it's very few people that can catch up to you. <laughs> so with three minutes and 27 seconds to go, Rancho Cucamonga goes up a score of 20-3 to three in the first quarter. Well, Coach B, these guys are as good as advertised, Coach B. You know, we're getting a chance right now uh, – to get a bird's eye view of it. I mean, you know, we have a special view here, Coach, because we can see the whole place of, of formulating here. And, and these, kind, these kids, are they're talented. You don't see a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. and you're just seeing them just, I mean, like clockwork, scoring at will. And the extra point is up, and the extra point is good. So with three minutes and 27 seconds to go, uh, at a, uh, I'm sorry, Rancho goes up to a score of 21 to 3. And you know, this game is special. When you think about it, Etiwanda, even though they call this community Etiwanda, it's in the city of Rancho Cucamonga. So right. this is a crosstown rivalry. Oh, without a doubt. And you know, right now for Etiwanda, they, you know, they want to participate in this rivalry. So they're going to have to get a win here. Or they have to get a win sometime or other uh, in this exchange here. But uh, I think right now, again, you know, they've, you know, the, uh, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars have silenced. This Etowan, the crowd right now, and they're trying to get some uh, some motivation back. And I stand corrected. Etowan, uh, Rancho beat Upland on 10-7. They played Los Osos last week, so winning this game, they'll win the city of Rancho Cucamonga championship because they would have beat uh, oh, Los Osos and then Etowan. So that on that kickoff, the ball goes out of bounds. So Etowan is going to get the ball in some very good field position. Yeah, that's going to be much needed. They're going to go ahead and bring uh, uh, McDonald back in. McDonald's coming into the uh, to the year right now, Coach B, um, averaging. Uh, roughly about 109 yards a game coming into the season with, a, with 657 yards on the year. Indeed, indeed. And that's the one thing that's unique about a city like this. When you have three high schools, you can never have a, a tie. Yeah. So it's always got to be gonna, someone's going to win the citywide championship. So, yeah. So that's and right now good. Rancho is just, you know, they're unmatched. Coach B, unmatched. And, and like you said, McDonald is jogging out on the field. So McDonald and Cashmere in the backfield has two receivers to his right, two to his left. He's in the shotgun. The ball is at the 35-yard line. It's a pitch to Cashmere. Cashmere gets – he finally gets to the edge, and he picks up, I would say, oh, depending where they spot him out, he picked up about 11 yards. So yeah. that was a very positive run for those Eagles. Well, you know, what we've seen uh, from Cashmere Dina, Coach B, the kid can play. Coming into the game, he has 70 carries. 451 yards, averaging 64 yards a game, five touchdowns on the year. So the kid can play. Indeed, indeed. And that's got to be something that Coach Davis has got to hang his hat on. It's like, hey, we're gonna, if we can move the ball, that's all you can ask for. Without a doubt. And right now, like, like we said before, they are missing a player. Their, their star running back, Starks, has been out with a high ankle sprain that's been really troubling him. Like I said, suited up tonight, unable to go for him. McDonald's in the backfield. He, he fakes the ball to Cash Medina. He is running to the left. And, that, oh, that was a dangerous pass. It was almost intercepted. And he was in the shotgun. That was Aaron Lewis again on the play, Coach B, senior DB. And as I said, these guys are deep at the DB position. So, you know, right now, to me, McDonald's game is not thrown on the run. His game is making his, getting his feet together, throwing the ball uh, with precision. Uh, with some time, but he didn't have a lot of time right there. Uh, number 45 for the Cougars was on the pass rush. And one thing you don't want to do against this Rancho, t Rancho team is get down early because no, the strength of their defense is their corners. There's no doubt about it. So now, you have, now you're, you're, you're playing right into their, their strength. You're having to throw the ball, put the ball in the air, and you're giving these guys multiple opportunities to take the ball away and go the other direction. We're in the shotgun, three receivers to your left, one to your right. Uh, McDonald hits his receiver, and his receiver gets stopped in the backfield. So it was second and ten, and McDonald hit the, the third receiver on his, on his right, and that DB got there. I think he was almost there by the time the ball got there. One of the things we've noticed with uh, Etiwanda is they run that play often. I'm sure Coach Baez had his DBs ready to go because they sniffed it out. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, they stack it up right there, and uh, then the high, or excuse me, the, the, the up uh, receiver has to block, but uh, the rancher was ready for it. It's a play. The thing about that, when you have four receivers on there, they're going to be playing D1 football pretty soon. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. hard. You know, they, their reaction speed is oh, just, just amazing. They're ready to go. These guys are ready to go. Two minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. They're in the shotgun. McDonald, he goes. It's a bubble screen to his receiver to Jordan Porter. And Porter picks up. He, he did a quick play. Did, did, and Porter picks up maybe five or six yards by the yard that play. So, let's see. He about a yard short, Coach B, but a great play, though. Especially, uh, again, for him, uh, for number 82, uh, for the, for the, uh, the Etiwanda Eagles, Coach B, 
Oh, he, he did a really good job of getting that play done, making, making some yards for him. Positive. And Davis is going to go for it. So fourth and three, he has shotgun, two receivers to his right, two to his left, Cashmere in the backfield. Let's see if he's going to hard count him. Will he snap the ball? No, he was trying to get them. No, no. It's, let's see what he's going to do. So he was trying to hard count. Nope, they, they, they shifted a receiver, and Davis is going to go. So he is going to go with one minute, 48 seconds to go in the first oh, quarter. Man. And it looks who did They jumped. Edouard on the jump. Let's see. Let's see what the, the referee – yes, it's going to be a oh, yeah. false start no on doubt us. Of, no doubt about it. He jumped. So now instead of being four and three, oh. you're going to be four and eight. You got to so kick let's it. See. Let's see what we're going to do. So, yep, with Diego Garcia trotting onto the field, you know Coach Davis has made his decision. So with one minute, 44 seconds to go in the first quarter, Coach Davis has decided to, to punt the ball, and this is Diego Garcia's second punt of the night. Yeah, for good reason, Coach B. You want to go ahead and get this ball off because with the way uh, the, the ability of uh, Rancho to score like that is tough. And like we said, Graham and Reed are back there to get it, and Reed he gets the ball at the 10-yard line. He's going backwards, which is never good. So he was at the 15 and back up to about the 10-yard line. On a, I know Jalen Reed's a special back, but is that a time if you're on the 10 – Typically, you teach a kid, to, if you're at the 10, let it go over your head. Well, I mean, what, it's, that, that's a very uh, – it's a tough place right there because, again, on a short hop, you know, all of a sudden now you can get the ball at the one-yard line. So, again, with a kid with his kind of his kind of skill set, Coach B, I can see why he caught it, but maybe you want to decide to catch a, do a fair catch right there versus just attempting to make a play. Indeed, and that's like it reminds me of what he did against Upland. He took the ball at the one-yard line and ran it back 99 yards for a touchdown. So he's used to doing that. In, indeed he is. <laughs> indeed he is. So uh, Rancho has the ball first and 10 from their own 10-yard line. They're going to be headed south on your radio dial here from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium in Rancho Cucamonga. So we're going to look and see what they're going to do on this first down play. Swing play to 24. It's a, and, and like you said, he's at, the, he's at the 15, that's the 20. He's at the 25. He's at about the 30-yard line with one minute and eight seconds to go. And one thing that I want to say is Bellatina Italiano is a proud sponsor of your Etiwanda Eagles. They have authentic Italian food. Remember, all the post-game celebrations are there. So if you want to hang out with Coach Davis and some of the players, make sure you guys make a trip on down to uh, Bellatina Italiano. And then also we want to say thank you to the Fontana Rotary Club. They, were, they donated and helped sponsor some of the, the uh, high school game of the week, as well as Fontana Mayor Warren, Fontana City Council member Michael Tihan, and second district supervisor Janice Rutherford. And it looks like, Coach B, uh, just to uh, move right along here, it looks like there was a penalty call, first one of the night against the uh, Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Indeed. Indeed. Brought that ball all the way back. So with 51 seconds to go in the first quarter, so now you're looking at first and about 15, and it's a pitch out to number 10 for Rancho Cucamonga. And that's going to be Nick Acosta right there, Coach B. So your quarterback catches it. So yeah. <laughs> interesting. So one thing. Well, we wanna... no, you know what, Coach B, it looks like that was number 12. On oh, number 12. That's... That's right. I was thinking that... it's your quarterback. So. so we're excited. You're listening. That's number 17. My, my apologies. Austin uh, Pacino. You're listening to Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week with Coach B. Andy Turner, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, you know the conversation starts. Stops here, live on Fox Sports 1350. So Acosta's in the backfield. We'll see if he'll snap it with 14 seconds to go. He's in the shotgun, two receivers right, two to your left, and it's 10 seconds to go. He does snap the ball, and he it's a quick pitch. Oh, oh my goodness, what a shake by number. Was that number 13? Number two. Number two for Rancho. That's going to be Mark. Khalil McGuire, Coach B, another senior. Uh, at wide receiver to have him at one, 150 at the weight, uh, but he was able to make a really good play on the outside there and, and make it a move on against those Eagles. And got either they got a first down or very, very close to one. So it looks like that's going to be end of your first half. First so quarter, uh, first, first quarter. quarter. I'm sorry, yeah. the end of your first quarter. So at the end of one, as advertised, those Rancho Cucamonga Cougars have come in on absolute fire. They lead a score of 21-3 to three over your home at Awanda Eagles. And one thing I like to see here also, Coach B, what, what I noticed about this Rancho Cucamonga team, they travel well. I mean, it looks like they've, they probably, this is probably the most I've seen on the visitor stands uh, all year during our broadcast, Coach B. And that's the one thing that's unique. Actually, I, I apologize. There are four high schools in the city of Rancho Cucamonga. We always, uh, you've got to think out to Loma. So, so in the city of Rancho Cucamonga, it's always unique when you have a crosstown rivalry. Indeed. So Indeed. you have Etiwanda, you have Rancho, you have Alta Loma, and you have Los Osos. Got it. So it's always unique when you see teams that are crosstown rivals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, retro Cucamonga is on the rise. I mean, you know, you know, I have, you know, you know, people that didn't probably even think about this until you saw Friday after next. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 Etiwanda is 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 doing something because you think like we we said before throughout the season. Coach Davis, head coach for the Etiwanda Eagles, yes, is an Etiwanda alumni. Oh yeah, he played here. He came back. He's coaching here. So this school means something to him. It's special to him, and well, it's always good to see uh, alumni come back. Quick backstory. Uh, now Nick Baez and Coach Davis actually have a little history. They worked together on the same coaching staff where Nick Baez was head coach and Coach Davis was under him. So they they had they know each other very well. I got a chance to talk to both of them before the game, so they're very familiar with each other. And uh, not going to be any surprises here tonight, Coach B. So third and one, it looks like Rancho Cucamonga powered through for a first down. So you're going to be looking at first and ten from the 22-yard line. Yeah. Were they on the same coaching staff here? No, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you're looking at a first and ten from the 22-yard line for the Rancho Cucamonga. Acosta's in the backfield. Wow, he hands it off to Jalen Reed. Jalen Reed gets five yards. He gets ten yards. He's dancing, and he is stopped by number nine, Nate Neal. And Nate Neal said, I'm tired of you dancing on my field, and I'm going to take you down. They do this very special play, Coach B. It's almost like a draw. Yeah, it's like a draw, but it's like a, 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 a it's almost like, like a delayed handoff. A, like a counter. I would mm-hmm. probably like liken it to a counter uh, where, you know, and they're really, they're, they're, they're causing some problems in the middle. So Acosta makes a quick pitch to number 13, and that's going to be a quick pitch to number 13, which is going to be Javon, Javion uh, Lofton. Now, Javion Lofton, Coach B, as I told you about before, he is their number one receiver mm-hmm. uh, for Rancho Cucamonga coming into the game. He's, had, he's already had uh, 360 yards, four touchdowns on the year, Coach B. This kick and play. So at 11 minutes and two seconds ago, the ball is at the 40 year second and five for uh, Rancho. And there it is. It looks like that Whoa. is Reed. He gets five yards, 10 yards, 15 yards. He has one player. Gutierrez is with him, and Gutierrez finally stops him, and he drug him out of bounds at about the 20. Three yards, and actually that was, I'm sorry, that was number four for Rancho, uh, for Etiwanda, and that's going to be L.J. Bailey. And, and that was a touchdown-saving tackle, Coach. Indeed he, it was. He, it's difficult to get Jalen Reed down. You look at his size, he's not a big kid, but he's so shifty, and it's very difficult to bring him down. He would remind me of a LaDainian Thomason. LaDain Dane. Yeah, small back, but and now to, be, uh, to get uh, some time off, it's going to be Dollar, and it's a sweet play to Dollar. He's five yards, ten yards, wow. fifteen yards. And you can, and this is a sophomore, and it takes two or three people to bring him down after about a twenty-yard run. Coach B, when I talked to Coach Byers afterwards, he just was just he, you know, he was just talking about how deep his team is, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you're really starting to see this. I mean, you know, they're just putting people in there, you know, as, as needed, and these guys and these kids are coming out here and playing some really. Uh, Football, I mean, some good football at a high level. There's the doorstop. There's the eight yards first and goal, and it is a fake, and he pitches it out to number oh. 83, and he is one man to beat, and he beats him. That's number 83 from Rancho Cucamonga, and that's going to be Ben Constable. Now, Ben Constable comes in, Coach B. Uh, they have him as a DB. I'm actually. sorry, that was 23. I'm okay. sorry, that was 23. Okay. That's that going to be uh, Boss Price. Yes, yes, 23. So that was an incredible play. So that's 23, and, and he had one man to beat. Yeah, yeah and, well, and, and again, you just have to make a football move there. He made a football move and put that kid up, put that other one of the Kegels on his behind. Yes, he did. So now you're looking at 10 minutes to go in the second quarter for Rancho Cucamonga. They're now up a score. 28 to 3 wow. uh, against the home Etiwanda Eagles live from Rancho Cucamonga uh, Etiwanda Eagles Stadium. And we you know and we're we're we, you know we have a great you know uh it's, I mean we have some special people up here uh, in the booth with us uh today. Uh we obviously we have uh, some folks that are broadcasting the game live. So you can see you can actually see the game live. Uh I believe it's live streamed. And then we also have here uh, Michelle Gardner the the uh the, you know the the talented writer for the uh, Inland Empire here. And, uh, and she's talked to us about these Rancho Cucamonga team coach being let us know these kids can play. Indeed they can. So with about 10 minutes to go, uh, Rancho Cucamonga is starting to impose their will here in this game. Yeah, Coach B. And they're just, you know, just at will, Coach B. They're scoring at will, you know, you know, and which is why you saw Coach Davis early in the game take that risky onside kick because they're just trying to get some kind of momentum built here, Coach B. Indeed. Indeed. I agree. I agree. So now it's, it, they're kicking it deep at number five, uh, number six, I'm sorry, Grayson. He gets it to 20. He gets it to about the 23, 24-yard line on that play. Now, Grayson took one to the house last week, Coach Yes, he B. did. Yes, you know, he did. So this kid, you know, you know, you give him a lane, he can do it. Indeed he can. So 
with nine minutes and 53 seconds to go. Etiwanda will start the ball. They will start off at uh, their own 24-yard line heading south on your radio dial here. And as we said, man, I, I can't tell you how beautiful this, uh, this field is. Man. When you look at the freeway, you look at the mountains. It just it, the air just smells fresh. I was about to say, man, it's a very it's a it has to be probably about an eighty it's like probably about eighty degrees tonight. This feels great, man. It is. So uh McDonald's in the backfield. He has Cashmere Dina with him. He has two receivers to his right to his left. He's in the shotgun. Hands it off to Cashmere and Cashmere is stopped in the back. Tell me a little bit about that speed you're seeing for these coups. Yeah, you're seeing kids come in here, Coach B, and really penetrate uh, with no problem. Do they I mean, have 11 kids on the field? Uh, and, and you have to really ask yourself that, Coach B, because the way they're able just to get through the line and then get to the line, Coach B, and make tackles mm-hmm. uh, is, is, is something. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. So you're looking at second and about 12 uh, for the uh, Etiwanda Eagles. The ball is about the 23-yard line, nine minutes and 18 seconds to go in the second quarter. Score is 28-3. Rancho Cucamonga is up over the home Etiwanda Eagles. McDonald's in the backfield. Hands off oh. to Cashmere. And Cashmere, Dina got hit. Uh, it was it, it, McDonald's in the shotgun. And Cashmere, Dina got hit by the time McDonald handed the ball off. And they're doing a really good job of reading the play. Uh, they got a kid on their team, Coach B. Uh, Malu Powell has 17 tackles, Coach B, for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougar. I mean, this kid can play. I mean, you know, you get 17 tackles. I mean, my goodness. Yes, indeed. So you're looking at third and about 14, 15. Uh, the ball is spotted at about the 20-yard line. McDonald's in the backfield. Cash Medina has two receivers to his left, two receivers to his right. He is in the shotgun. He gets it. He's looking deep. It is a screen pass, and it is incomplete. Well, and, and Coach B, you know what happened on that. They've, they've done such a good job of penetrating it's the, the Etiwan, the Eagles players, they're, they're anticipating that somebody's coming right there for him. So he was scared to catch the ball because he was, I mean, they, they've, they've, they've gotten, they've been so disruptive on the Rancho Cucamonga side, he wasn't prepared for it. Indeed, indeed. So now you're looking at a fourth and about 14 with eight minutes and 25 seconds to go. Uh, Diego Garcia is back on the field and he's kicking it deep. But the thing about it is on the other side is Graham and Reed. And this and and uh, it re- lets oh, it bounce. Rebound. It bounces to the forty, the thirty-five. He picks it up, and he's going. He's going. He went about twenty yards. Now Ooh. he's at the thirty-five. Oh, he's at the forty. It is a flag on the play. He's at the fifty. Another flag. He's at. So let's see. It looks like he may take this to the house. But I think the referees threw yeah. about nine flags on that play. It was a, def- it was a defensive player, and they, and they're starting to make rules on that. And I think which is pretty good. You know, you have to be, be careful on how you hit, uh, how you hit players on the on the uh, on the in, in special teams. So I would either say that's either going to be a, a defensive player, a defenseless player, or it's going to be a clip. There's four referees on the field, and every referee threw a flag. Yeah. And so it looks like there's multiple infractions on the play, Coach B. Will they be offset? So it looks like there's a personal foul on on the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Yes, yeah, so I was going to be clipping. Or, or So it was the, all on Rancho. Yeah. So... I think it was either the defensive uh, hitting hitting a defenseless player because uh, one of the one of the Etiwanda Eagles took a shot. So Jalen Reed got the ball to Etiwanda's about thirty yard line, but with that penalty, the ball is going to be pushed all the way back to their twenty yard yeah. line. So they were they were north of the fifty. Yeah. But you know, with the way these Cougars can move the ball, they could start the ball off at, in the end zone. Yeah, go figure. So eight minutes and six seconds to go. It's first and ten. The ball is now spotted at their own 20-yard line. We have the uh, Acosta in the backfield. He has two receivers with him in the shotgun, and he hands the ball off. It is a sweet play, and it's a stretch play. And it is uh, Sean Dollar. And he, he gets – it looks like he may have got about a yard on that play. And that was a really good play by number 17, Jerome Wilson, uh, for the Etiwanda Eagles. was able to make a really good tackle. Uh, because, again, they've had to insert some people to worry. I mean, because uh, Reed's his speed mm-hmm. is, 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 is threatening. You, gotta, you have to deal with it. So they're doing a really good job of making sure they got some really uh, some good kids out there on the edge. Seven minutes and 37 seconds to go in the second quarter. Acosta's in the backfield. It is a reverse, and they're going to pass. Number 13 is going over the top, and it was, it was incomplete. So number 13 is going to be Javion Lofton, who is – 
Uh, he was trying to make a pass, but it was an incomplete pass. And in the second quarter, we want to say thank you to our sponsors once again. The Army National Guard is a proud sponsor of your Etiwanda Eagle. The hat and their warm, wool famous pastrami are a proud sponsor of your Etiwanda Eagle. I'll tell you a story. My wife and my kids absolutely love the hat in their pastrami. In uh, do they? Okay. So Acosta's in the backfield. He pitches it to number 24, and there's some flags out there. And he and it looks like the players are out there. They're talking to each other. Oh yeah, they getting, are talking to one another. It's getting a little chippy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that was a pitch play to number twenty-four. That's going to be Justin Alexander. But there are some flags on the field, and that's the one thing about this is unique. Uh, uh, Eternal is is a lot of these kids know each other. Oh, there's no doubt about it. They have history. They uh, play youth football together. Oh yeah, you know, and and then with with the so and it, you know when you're in close quarters. You know, you go to you go to Stater Brothers. Mm-hmm. You're, you're you're seeing these kids there. You know? Yep. Yep. So it looks like that penalty was on on Etiwanda. So the ball is going to be moved to the 41 yard line. Unique thing, we were at the uh, the uh, freshman game yesterday, and after the game, you saw a lot of the kids were hanging out because they played football together. Oh, there's no question. Well, they probably a lot of them live in close quarters. First and ten from the 41 yard line, and it looks like Acosta hit number tw- number 11. And that's going to be Graham on that play. So with Six minutes and 53 seconds to go. The ball was spotted at the 41, and Acosta hit Graham for about a four-yard completion on that play. So now they are right knocking on that 50-yard line. The ball is now spotted at the 45-yard line. Yeah. So you're looking at a uh, you're looking at a second and about six on this play with six minutes and 33 seconds to go in the second quarter. And there's a handoff to number 24 on that play, and 24 is going to be Justin Alexander. Yeah, Alexander comes in, uh, spells for uh, for Reed, and he's still able to. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> he pulled a double spell move. Yes. And uh, looks like about two yards to go for it first. So third and two, and it is a handoff to, to once again to Alexander. And they stuffed him at the line, but look, looking at the spot, yeah. it looks like he's going to get that first and ten. So they're now going to be north of your 50-yard 50 50 yard line. Yeah, and, they're, you know, and again, it's just like Hawkwork, Coach B. These guys have a, they have a way where – they're just moving the ball with no problem. And once again, we want to say thank you because tonight's game is brought to you in part by the Fontana Rotary Club, Fontana Mayor Aquanetta Warren, Fontana City Council Member Tahan, and Second District County Supervisor Janice Rutherford. Hand off to number 27, and that was a sweet play, and that's going to be Sean Dollar. And Sean goes off tackle, and he picks up maybe 13 or 14 yards on that. What a football name, Sean Dollar. Exactly. He's money. Yeah, cash money. <laughs> So for the Fontana Rotary Club, make sure you check them online at FontanaRotary.org. So now you're looking at first and ten from about the 35-yard line. They're north of the 50-yard line. They're in Etiwanda's territory. Acosta's in the shotgun. He doesn't see anything, so he decides to scramble. He goes five yards. He goes ten yards. He slides a baseball slide, so he must have been a baseball player. So he gets right to about the first down. And, and Coach B, he's a capable runner. Uh, on the year, 24 carries, 125 yards. Two touchdowns on the year, so he's able to tuck the ball and run a knee beat. So Rancho, like we said, the ball was pushed back on that penalty till they were at their own 20-yard line, and just like that, they have the ball now spotted on the 20, about the 26-yard line, and you're looking at about second and about a yard. Acosta fakes the handoff and he pitches it. Oh, that was a oh, oh my god, someone what a hit! They are Whoa. hitting out there, and that was Gutierrez. Gutierrez that hit? He made that hit. So you're looking at. And it looks like they gave it up. Oh, so was that a fumble? They found that a fumble. Interesting. And there's, hey, there's no replay here, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an incomplete. No, nah, I, I thought so too. It, you know, because it looked like he had it, made a couple of moves, but not only did he fumble it, he did also make a played. football move. That that's debatable, <laughs> and then that could have been a mercy call right there by the by the. Uh, <laughs> by the <laughs> officiating, huh? <laughs> so you're looking at first and ten. Etiwanda has the ball at their own 27-yard line with four, nine, four minutes and 59 seconds to go in the second quarter. We're live in Rancho Cucamonga on the campus of Etiwanda at the Etiwanda brand-new Eagle Stadium. What a beautiful stadium this is. Very, very so you're nice. Looking first and 10, so uh, you have – it looks like there was a change oh. at running back. So that was number 14. That's McDonald in the backfield, and it was a change of running back. Number 20. Number that's number twenty for the Etiwanda Eagles. That's going to be AJ Williams. Yes, indeed, junior running back comes in. So AJ is he's he's fired up and he's ready to play. Yeah, and like we said, these kids know each other. So now you're looking at second down and about seven to go. 
Uh, the ball is now spotted at a, uh, squarely about the 30-yard line with four minutes and 28 seconds to go. Once again, McDonald's in the shotgun, three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left. He's in a backfield by himself, so let's see what they can do. They're trying to spread him out, and he's looking to pass. And he uh, and they, they're getting pressure on him. Yeah. He was looking to pass, and that's one of the things. You've got to go with your first read and get rid of the ball. Yes, you do. And, and you know, and, and see him right in, in these areas, you, I mean, especially when you've had that many three and outs, you have to find ways to advance the ball. Mm-hmm. Indeed you do. So you're looking at third down and about eight to go. So it looks like McDonald lost about a yard on that scramble. So you're looking at third and eight with four minutes, about four minutes to go in the second quarter with Etiwanda Eagles trailing the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, a score of 28 to three. So let's see. So now you've got McDonald in the backfield. He has, once again, A.J. in the backfield with him. Three receivers to his left, one to his right. He fakes the handoff, and he's looking to go over the top. And great little play to number 11 on that play. And that's going to be uh, Dev, Devin Jenkins. And he sat there and just squatted in a place. And when you're running zone, you just find the hole and you sit. Devin Jenkins did a really good job at that, Coach B. Found, got, got behind the sticks. Because, again, you don't want to catch the ball too short. He was able to get behind the sticks and make a positive play at first down, which was extremely needed by Coach Davis and his Eagles. And I'll tell you this, when he made that reception, boy, did he get popped. The DBs, Coach B, are flying around out there. And that looks like for, their, for them that, that was number, number one, Ty, Tyria uh, uh, Venable. Oh, they got a penalty as well. They got a roughing the passer. And they'll take, all, they'll take everything they can get. Tyree. Uh, so now you got McDonald in the shotgun. He has one re- one running back with him, and it is a fake pass, and he's going to run, and he picks up about a yard on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, I, it will call, it, you know, right now, I mean, you know, again, McDonald, can he run? Yes. Should he be running right now? I'd, I'd, I'd have to say no. Uh, right now you want to get the ball up, but again, you know, you're, 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 you know it's, it's a double-edged sword, Coach B, because you're, now you're, you're, doing, you're putting the football uh, in the hands or in close quarters of the hands of the, of the best part of the Rancho Cucamonga defense. And that did look like a design run. So now you're looking at, with two minutes and 40 seconds to go, you're looking at, he, it, actually he got back to the line of scrimmage. So McDonald's in the shotgun now. He's in the shotgun with A.J., two receivers to his left, two to his right, and he hands the ball off to A.J., and he's trying to get to that edge. And I'll tell you, the edge that Rancho, the speed that Rancho has on the edge. Yeah, to, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's something. You know, and they have not, Coach B, been able to. I say LJ. It's, uh, AJ, it's, uh, I said AJ, it's LJ. I'm sorry, yes. go ahead. Yes. LJ Bailey. Yes. And, and one of the things that they're having a challenge with, Coach B, is the edge. To me, what it is is you have to figure out ways to, to make some short pass, like almost like the uh, Bill Walsh and the 49ers, where it's a pass play, but it's a run. I mean, it's like a, yes. it's a run and pass play, per se. And, you know, I, I stand corrected once again. Number 20 is AJ Williams. So, num- <laughs> so LJ is number four. So number 20, that was number 20. LJ. We may have another parent coming up here <laughs> shortly. So you look at third down at about 14 to go. Etiwanda has three receivers left, two to your right, Eight, uh, and they, they are blitzing. And, oh, my goodness, that was a nice screenplay that was set up. And, and you know, and right there, Coach B, that, that's almost close to pass interference because he was holding up the receiver. One of the, uh, the DBs was holding up the receiver right there, uh, which made it impossible for McDonald to complete the pass. In, indeed. So on that play, so you're looking at a uh, third, a uh, fourth, and about 14. So we we see number 77, Diego uh, Garcia, out to punt with one minute 38 seconds to go. With the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars up the score, 28 to three over Etowanda. And you can see Coach Davis talking to AJ Williams because he let him know you cannot play around right there. Your quarterback is getting rushed, and you got to figure out a way to to uh, to. to um, Run the route. Oh, it was oh, a muff. It was a out. punt. It was a muff. And it looks like Etowan is saying they recovered and it. And they did recover it, Coach. They James. recovered it. What a play. At the 20 yard line, the uh, Etowan, the Eagles recovered that ball. And you know, I didn't see that was not punted to Reed. No. I, I don't I, see who muffed that. Well, it might have been Reed, Coach B. No, that, Reed was on the other side. Okay, because I, I saw him walking right there. Yeah, because Reed, uh, Reed was on the far side. Uh, at any rate, right now, they need something positive right now. So they do need a score. A score right here brings it at least respectable. Yes. Gets it 10 points. Hey, you know, now you have 10 points. You know, you're down, you're, you're down 18 points, but you're, you at least have some momentum going into the half. Only a minute and 30 left, Coach B. So some of the best position, field position they've had all night, they have the ball 
at Rancho Cucamonga's uh, 21-yard line. You're first and 10. McDonald's in the gun. He has a, a running back with him. He's looking over the top, and it was intercepted oh, wow. by Graham. And Graham is on the edge, and it doesn't look like anyone. He has one man to beat, and he gets to him. And he gets to him, and Graham runs the ball out to about his uh, – to to Etiwanda's 47-yard line. And Coach B. McDonald threw the ball behind behind the receiver right there, Coach B. That's his bottom line. Uh, when he threw the football, it was clearly uh, behind him. And, uh, and the DBs, they're just too talented, Coach B. So you're looking now, Rancho, with one minute and 20 seconds to go. You're looking at first and 10. The ball is spotted at about the 48-yard line. So Rancho Cucamonga, we'll see if they can nail one in before halftime with one minute and 20 seconds to go. Uh, you have Acosta in the backfield with, with the always dangerous Jalen Reed with him. That was one receiver to his left. And it's a pitch pass to Reed. Reed's at the 50. He's at the 45. He's at the 40. He picks up. And it, he runs so effortless. Yeah, Coach B. He has a very unique running style. And I can tell you, it worked. he is very fast uh, and, and patient. Knows how to kind of like almost like a stick shift, Coach B. Knows how to get in the gear when needed. But that Rancho Cucamonga line is pretty big. So it's one minute, exactly one minute to go. You're looking at first and ten from about the 43 yards. Pitch again to to uh, to Reed, and there's a flag on the on the field. So we'll see what that call is. But I, Jalen, just like you said, it looks like he's just floating out there. Yeah, he's on roller skates, Coach B. And that was holding against Rancho, so that's why he looked like he was running so effortlessly. <laughs> A couple and, guys got pulled down. And that's going to be a big one because that's going to push you back 10 yards. Yeah, well, right now, you know, what we have it, but it's, but it's first down. Uh, still a lot of time left, Coach B. You know, and, again, with with the way that these Cougars have been shown that they can score the ball, mm-hmm. I mean, my goodness. It's nothing to them. So you're looking at, at uh, first and about 20. The ball is about the 48-yard line. Acosta's looking deep, and it's a screen pass to Reed. And, man, he just shakes right past somebody, and he gets he picks up about 12 yards. A man was in position to, to catch him. Yeah, Coach B. You know, you, well, when you tackle Mr. Reed, you have to have impeccable coach, I mean, a tackling technique. You have to really, you know, I mean, this kid is, I mean, if you go in there just trying to just dive around and you're not really paying attention, he's going to make you look, look real, real bad. And you in the shotgun, you have Acosta and Reed in the backfield. And Reed, Reed looks like he's tired. And, he, and you get a good blitz. And it was a, oh, Ooh. is that a pick? No. no, no, it was almost intercepted. It was a screenplay. Reed was, it, he reminded me of the way Jim Brown used to be. Every time Jim Brown would get up, he looked like he's tired. Exactly. And Reed looked like he's tired and he's winded. But then they run the screenplay right to him. Yeah, and, you know, and, and had he gotten that, Coach, but he'd still be running. Indeed, indeed. So Acosta's in the backfield. He has a... It's a third and nine. He has two receivers to his left, two to his right. He's in the gun by himself. He doesn't like the play he likes, so he looks over to Coach Baez. And Baez, and Baez didn't like the set either, so Baez calls the first timeout well, no, of that, the game. That was actually a timeout for Etiwanda. Okay. So, uh, so it looks like uh, Coach Unger didn't like something he saw. So he's over there telling yeah. his team, hey, we need some adjustments. Well, I know what he, what he, what he saw he didn't like. That was number five, mm-hmm. Jalen Reed. Indeed. Indeed. So what, what a game tonight. And, again, we want to thank so much, so much for the, the leaders of the city of Fontana for stepping up and helping out these Etiwanda Eagles teams. The unique thing about Etiwanda, it is based in the city of Rancho Cucamonga, but about 70 to 75% of the kids actually live in the city of Fontana. Fontana resident. Uh, two of my kids, is, uh, you know, live in Fontana and go to Etiwanda. So you have the Fontana Rotary Club stepped up and helped out the kids of, of Etiwanda High School as well as the Fontana Mayor, Aquanetta Warren, Fontana City Council member Michael Tahan and Second District Supervisor Janice Rutherford. Yeah, Coach B. And folks, you, you guys don't want to miss our halftime show. We're going to be talking about all the get kind of keep you up to date on all the Inland Empire scores as well. So you're looking at Casas in the gun. He has Sean Dollar back there with him, and he's looking deep and wide open is Graham, and Graham tiptoes into the end zone for about a. It, it was about uh, it was a 48 yard touchdown pass. Like you said, Coach B. He was one of our spotlight players. Uh, in the in the first issue of the IU Sportsnet magazine for 2016, and uh, he's not disappointed today. Interception and two touchdowns. Indeed. So now, when you're looking at with 22 seconds to go, the uh, Rancho Cucamonga Cougars they're not letting up. So they're they're going. I mean, it's a football game, so they came to play, right? Yeah, and and, and I mean, and, and they came to play. So the score is now 34 to three temporarily. The extra point is up. 
And the extra point is good. So now you're looking going into the halftime with 22 seconds to go. Rancho Cucamonga Cougars now lead a score 35 to 3 over the home Etiwanda Eagles. And you can see that you know they're asking a lot of questions uh, to these DBs for the Etiwanda Eagles, and there's not a lot of answers. Indeed, when you have a kid out there that that has a number five and his last name's Reed, he's going to be hard. he's going to be out here all night. Yeah. You know, and then, and then on top of that, with with the, with a kid that can play like that, then uh, you know when you come, when you combine that with Graham, I mean, you know, it's, it could be a long night. Indeed, and like we said, the strength of this team is their DBs. There's no question. So now, at least on defense. And now, and we saw that when Edwana got into a passing situation, trying to pass to get into the end zone, who stepped up? Yeah. The DBs. Yeah. And you know, and, and they're stepping up with big hits, athletic plays. You know, all that you want to see in some in a great uh, defensive backcourt. Indeed. So you're looking at the kickoff, and let's see how. And they kind of pooch punt it, and number 55 gets it at the 30. He's to the 35. He's uh, he's at the. And it oh, looks and he like, gave the ball up. Are they going to say he was down? It looks like they said that he was down. So let's see what he's going to say. Okay. It looks like someone is down for yeah. uh, for Edwanda as well. So I, they they still haven't signaled who has the ball. No, it looks like they're, they're going to go ahead and give it to them. The, them being the Eagles. Okay, so we have about 15 seconds to go before we get into the uh, the halftime for your Etiwanda Eagles. We want to say thank you so much back at uh, at home base at Fox. Jasmine is running the board for hey, us. Hey, Jeff. So we thank you so much. And Greg Holler was on with us a little bit earlier. So we want to thank everybody back at the command station. And as we said, we want to uh, we want to make sure that we say. Uh, we let everyone know to stay tuned to that halftime show. Yeah, indeed. We're going to be going over all the, uh, keep you up to date on all the high school scores that are taking place in the great uh, city of, great, excuse me, great community of the Inland Empire. Uh, give you that. And, may, and also, we don't want you guys to miss it. Uh, we're on every Saturday morning on Fox Sports 1350 AM, IE Sportsnet. IE Sportsnet uh, will give you guys, we are the Inland Empire Sports Store to give you guys all the updated news. Just to give you a teaser, uh, the Corona Centennial Huskies are up 51-7 to in the second quarter against the Corona Panthers. So McDonald's in the backfield. He does a draw play, and he hands that off to number five, which is Kashmir Dina. And Kashmir was tripped up on that play. So that looks like that's going to be the last That'll play going into, uh, going into the half. Wow. I mean, what a what an offensive um, a juggernaut they have been able to show uh, coming out here, putting up 35 points in the first half, Coach B. Indeed, indeed. So, Rancho Cucamonga, when you ask the question, if they're real, I would say they pretty much are. Yeah, they definitely, I mean, if they, you know, they're as good as advertised. They went out there, they've shown uh, us uh, on, on a big stage and really been able to show that these guys are talented, they're stacked, and uh, they're a force to be reckoned with right here, Coach B. And when you look at it, when you look back at the game, Edwanda started off good. They kicked the ball off, and, and, and it was fumbled by Rancho, and yeah. Etiwanda was able to go up to a, a score of 3-0, yeah. uh, and that was the last score that they had, they've had tonight. And they've had some opportunities, Coach B, but they've just not been able to capitalize on it. We saw them right there when they were inside the 10-yard line, and, and, and McDonald just was there, you know, wasn't able to get the pass in. And, and, and with this Rancho Cucamonga team, you have to be precise. Uh, any any misstep, and, and we've seen that. And yeah, Thomas Graham Jr. take the ball and almost took it all, uh, the, uh, the, uh, all the way home. So with seven minutes and 56 seconds to go in the first quarter, Sean Dollar for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars was able to put Rancho up a score uh, by a score of seven to three in the first quarter. So uh, when you look at that, so that was the big, the first, the first touchdown. And then after that, you had a pass play with about six minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Uh, Acosta connected with number 13 uh, for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, and that's Javion Lofton for their second score of yeah. the night. Uh, and just looking at it, when you look at the stat sheets, it's just, it's just amazing. And then uh, after that, you had... And, and you knew he was going to show up. You knew he was going to get in there. Uh, it wasn't until the third touchdown, but number five for Rancho Cucamonga was Jalen Reed. With uh, He went ahead and scored and put uh, Rancho up 
a score of 21 to 3. Yes, indeed. Um, and then after that, uh, you look at, at – and then, uh, once again, Acosta, for good measure, he went ahead and threw another touchdown pass, and he connected with number 23, and that's going to be Justin Alexander that put them up a score of 28 to 3. Yes. Uh, and then let's uh, – one more score to, to, to finish it off. Uh, number, I think he was number three in the IE Sports Net Inland Valley Poll. Number eleven, Mr. Thomas Dependable, Graham. Mr. Thomas Graham Jr. Junior. <laughs> Junior, put some respect on his name. Uh, he went ahead and just a, well, it was less than thirty seconds. Well, I mean, and, and that's after an interception, Coach B was able yes. to get a pick. Yes. So if you think about it, if he makes the interception to give the ball back to Rancho, it's only uh, right that he goes in and scores the and, touchdown. And I'm sure he probably talked to Baez and said, hey, Coach, you know, you've got to give. <laughs> I haven't been on the scoreboard yeah. yet. My folks are out here watching that. <laughs> Indeed. The game's being broadcast by Fox. Indeed. We want to make sure we get it out there. Indeed it was. So, so it, when you look at the game, I mean, it's been a, a very eventful game. But we, while we're at halftime, what we want to do is make sure Make sure that you guys follow Etiwanda Eagles football on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Get to know your Eagles and Eagle Pride. And also for anyone who's here at the stadium that's listening to us on the iHeartMedia app, who's listening on your cell phone, remember to purchase your Etiwanda Eagles game programs. The programs are sold throughout the stadium. So make sure you get those in. I don't know if they still have them, but at the beginning of the year, I know they had the IE Sports Net, the magazine, yes. uh, available for sale that had these Etiwanda Eagles on the cover. And and, and big shout out to Patty LaBella, mm-hmm. uh, our uh, sports uh, a reporter and writer, uh, did some really good stories uh, on uh, Coach Davis and uh, his return here to Etiwanda to coach these uh, coach these Eagles team, and uh, pro, uh, certainly a proud moment for Coach Davis and the uh, and the Etiwanda faculty. And we're excited, as you said. We're we're really excited tomorrow. If you tune in at yes, eight yes, a.m., we're going to have a takeover tomorrow. Yeah, so. hey, man. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, and you always love that, you know. When we, you know, and Coach B just talking about our, our our broadcast, we do every Saturday morning on Fox Sports thirteen fifty. We're going to have Vest, uh, Vista Marietta come in, and they said they're doing a takeover. So I mean, and, 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 you know, it's got team, graphic and everything. Oh man, this this, <laughs> this team here, they, they roll deep. So we're anticipating a studio full. Of folks, and so you guys don't want to miss it. That's every Saturday, eight eight uh, eight o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Again, that's IE Sports and on Fox Sports thirteen fifty. It's going to be a it's going to be a great show. Um, and when you look at when you look at it, speaking of that, we have a list of who all are going to be our guests tomorrow. Wow! So so our guests include. They're going to be uh, David Olson. The David Olson. Um, uh, David Olson is going to is the head coach for uh, for Vista Marietta. Also, we're going to have Cole Dobbs or, or Cole Debolt, a senior running back, 190, uh, 197 yards, number 27. Also, going to have number four, Cade Greenley, is going to be out there for Vista Marietta. Then we're also going to have looks like his brother, number three, Carson Greenley, is going to be coming out there. Then we have number 92, senior defensive end, Anthony Mamera, going to be coming out there. Then we also have another uh, 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 running back at slash DB. Number 28, Javelin Goodtree will be coming out there, and uh, we're looking forward to that. The, the most important Vista Marietta Bronco that I wanted to see is couldn't make it. Who's that? Sua Craven. Sua. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I he's, think he's busy. <laughs> he's playing on the daunted, uh, on the daunted uh, 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 Washington Redskins. You know, my, you know, they ain't they ain't first place like my Cowboys. But. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in speaking of first place and positions, and when you look at it, as we said, this is when it gets serious. Yeah. This is when it means something. We are deep in baseline league play, and like we said, this has been. Pretty much the breakout year for these Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Their arch nemesis has been the the Upland uh, Stouts or the Highlanders, whatever you want to call them. Right. Uh, but Rancho Cucamonga, when you look at the league, Rancho Cucamonga uh, 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 undefeated seven and zero, two and zero in league. Uh, two weeks ago, they they defeated Upland, uh, who is now one and one in baseline league play. Chino Hills is one on one in baseline league play. Etiwanda is one and one in baseline league play. And then you have the Los Osos uh, Grizzlies who are 0 and 2. So once you get past the 2 and 0 Etiwanda, uh, I'm sorry, Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, everyone else is jammed up for that second second place in league. Yeah, Coach B. And, and right now, as you were mentioning, uh, Rancho Cucamonga is coming in here off of a the huge win off of Los Osos uh, last week. Uh, you know, and 65. 
uh, 65 uh, to 7 over them. And, and, then, uh, and then also, we're, you know, right now, you're saying they're on a Rancho Cucamonga seven game winning streak over at Awanda right now. So you know, you know they're they're gonna they're trying to they they need to try to turn this around. And Etiwanda has a one game losing streak. Yes. Oh, you're talking about? It, it, I thought you meant against them. No, no, no. I mean overall. Oh, overall. overall. I apologize. Overall. Okay, yeah. Overall. No, no, no. That's why I was looking like. <laughs> Wait no, no. And Rancho is seven to zero, and it would be on the seven game winning streak. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Rancho, uh, I'm sorry, Etiwanda is on a one game losing streak. They had a tough loss last week. Yeah, Chino Hills against Chino Hills, a game that was very winnable, without a doubt. And you know, and and, and you know, uh, when you look at this and you say, hey. You know, give us your, uh, you know, you, we've seen, you know, roughly what, uh, five games of the Eagles. And one thing I can say is the program is being turned around. The, you know, the rebuilding, I mean, we're not really rebuilding. They've kind of had to shuffle a little bit. they got a new coaching staff in. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, you know, there's some things that are new. But to me, it, it looks promising. I like what Coach Davis is doing over here. It looks like he got the, he got the young men there, they're fired up. Uh, you know, uh, no, they're respectable young men. We talked to them on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, again, you, you're playing in one of the toughest leagues in California. Right. Uh, Definitely one of the toughest leagues in in, in uh, Inland Empire. There's no question about that. So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, uh, hands down, every week is going to be competitive football. And in, in the way that Rancho, the, you know, Coach Bias has these, uh, these, these, uh, uh, these Cougars playing just lights out football, 7-0, seven 7-game winning streak. You know, and this is to build upon a successful year they had last year. So, and as we said last week, uh, Rancho Cucamonga went into Los Osos and defeated them as, as, at a score of sixty-five to seven. And last week, the uh, the Etiwanda Eagles took a tough loss, first uh, first loss in league after uh, beating Los Osos. They lost to Chino Hills, yes. a, a score of uh, twenty-four to fourteen. Yeah, no question about it. And that's and it, one of those things where you say the the game was closer than the final score. There's no question about that. Yeah, we. I mean, it was very competitive. Uh, and, and Chino Hills looked really good. They're tough, tough on the line, very stout, uh, and, and really good play. Um, you know, a, another good game is going to be coming up, Coach B. You were kind of alluding to it. Uh, next week, Rancho Cucamonga is going to be taking on Damon. And uh, Coach Bias said he was a little concerned about that. Indeed, indeed. So when you look at, when you go to, if you want up to the minute score, all you have to do is go ahead and log on to iesportsnet.com, look in the right corner on your phone or on your, your laptop, and you'll see the scores. And when you look at it right now, what Redlands East Valley is doing to Eisenhower. Yeah, I mean, my goodness. I mean, you know, and Rev is out there putting it on him 42 to nothing. At the half. And that's Coach Brook, and, and, you know, and he, you know, he has Rev, uh, has him going right now. And this is when you want to start turning it around. Only to be, and, and not to be outdone, a team from the same city, the Redlands Terriers, are up against A.B. Miller, a score of 41-0 to zero as well. A.B. Miller on a, you know, new coaching staff in there as well. They're going to, you know, they're, gonna, they're, they're rebuilding right now, and, uh, and it looks like they have a, a bit of a ways to go. So Grand Terrace is up at the half at a score of 8-7 to seven over those Fontana Kaiser uh, Cats. And then also you have Temesco Titans coming in right now, 22, uh, uh, 22 to nothing over the Lakeside Lancers. Norda Vista Braves are up a score of, over your Ramona Rams. Yeah, man, right now they're a score of twenty-one to seven, and they're taking it to them right now. Those Ramona Rams, you know, and, you know, and that's you know, and and, the, and you know, they're on an upswing right now, but uh, having some problems. So Arrowhead Christian uh, in Ambassador League play are taking on the Aquinas Falcons. Their uh, Aquinas is up at halftime, a score of seventeen to. Seven. And then also you have Altaloma. You said it right here, Coach. Be another Rancho Cucamonga team, Altaloma Braves. They're they're right now taking them in the woodshed, thirty-five to thirty-five to six over the Montclair Cavaliers. And we cover the high desert. We oh, get yeah. out to the high desert. No so question. Apple Valley is down uh, to Serrano uh, Diamondbacks, a score of ten to six. And you know what that's setting up is a big showdown with Oak Hill and, and uh, Serrano. That's always a game that that determines the league. And we saw Oak Hills over the earlier this year, right here on this very field against the Etiwanda Eagles. Yeah, no question about it, Coach B. And also, we have we just mentioned that Corona Centennial uh, up big uh, at the in the second quarter, uh, 57, 51 to seven over the Corona Panthers. Indeed, they were. So when you look at it, when you, we have some more scores, Heritage all they do is win. Heritage at the in the second quarter they're up a score of twenty one to six against the Paris Panthers, friends of the show. Yeah, I said we've, we've had, had we've, we've had them on. Had them on the show, Coach B, and they're jacked up about playing uh, Heritage and and, and and again right now they're, they're as good as advertised, Coach B. They're in there making it happen. Another friend of the show, Citrus Hawks, are up fourteen to ten over the San Jacinto Tigers. 
uh, the Zamont brothers. Yeah, Coach Zamont got Citrus Hill rolling over there right now. Also, we have the Claremont Wolfpack uh, right now. They're down, down pretty big right now, 23 to nothing. Ayala Bulldogs are up. Yes, indeed. Colony, a team that uh, there was so much expectation yeah, the team at the beginning of the year. It hasn't been the season I know that they wanted. But right now, they're in business. They're up. Uh, 16 to 14 over the Ontario Jaguars, and then Coach Coach Espido, Espido, uh, uh, our guy, huge friend of the show, our guy. Yeah, and uh, right now he has the Wildcats up 36 to seven over the uh, at a, the Elsinore Tigers. I'll tell you right now, I don't see anyone beating Coach Esposito this year. I, I and, until he gets to playoffs. I was about to say, but maybe you know, maybe in the playoffs they're, they're, they still got a tough road in the playoffs. But yeah, right now they're in league play. They're dominant. Historic team, the Fontana Steelers. If Fontana's a steel town, yeah, uh, they're Kaiser Steel. There they are. They're up uh, a score eight to seven over the Colton Yellow Jackets. Yeah, then you have right now. You have the Dequeats, uh Titans, uh, the Dequets, excuse me, Titans, uh, right now uh, losing right now uh, nine to zero over the Hem- I mean, excuse me, uh, the Hemet Bulldogs are winning that game over uh, the Dequeats. So the Martin Luther King Jr. Wolves are up. 21 to 7 over the Roosevelt Mustangs. Yeah, and then you also have the Santiago, Santiago Corona Santiago. They took a took a, a really uh, a convincing beating by Corona Centennial uh, last week. Uh, right now they're playing the Norco uh, Cougars, the other Cougars. And uh, right, what is that score? We have we uh, just lost. We just, <laughs> we're trying to give you guys real time as, as we get it. But right now we'll move right along. We also have Riverside Poly right now. They're on the upswing, but uh, my goodness, uh, Coach Steiny. Uh, 41, uh, his Mustang, Rancho, Rancho Verde Mustangs, uh, 41 to 7 over Riverside Poly. So we're about, just about two minutes out before the, uh, we get back to, uh, to, to play here. When you look at it, the score, uh, the Etiwanda Eagles are at home against their crosstown rivals, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. The Cougars are here in town. We're, at, we're on the campus of Etiwanda at Eagle Stadium. Uh, and the score is 35 to 3. What adjustments can you make? Maybe you can ask the referee, can you disqualify Reed? Or? No, you're going to ask him to have an additional player or two <laughs> on the field. Maybe put 13 men on the field. Right now, they're having a problem uh, uh, stomping uh, Jalen Reed. He, he again, again, Coach, but you've been talking about him for the last two weeks uh, since that game over Upland. And uh, this kid comes in here, and he is just an amazing running back. Extremely talented, has a vision. You know, I mean, you know, like he said, I mean, you, you described him like, like LaDainian Thomas. I mean, that, I was, that's, that's lofty. But, you know, when you see him against these kids, I mean, that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind because he's, he's strong, uh, runs the ball with power. You know, he can find the gaps and then has very – he has extreme breakaway speed. So, and then, then, you, then, you, then you couple that with uh, a, a player like Thomas Graham Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming out, you know, getting play, making, you know, making plays on both sides of the football. You know, getting the interceptions and then, you know, and able to met, run some really, really good routes and uh, scoring big for the uh, Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. And you know, it's funny because we talked about this live on air on Fox Sports 1350 on IE Sportsnet, and, and I said this. I, it's funny that he wears the number five because I say, and I don't want to compare him. Don't get me wrong. I'm not comparing a college player to a high school player, but what I said is the last time I saw someone who had speed that was just on the next level like that from the next player was Reggie Bush. Yeah. But I guess you could say Black Mamba um, yeah. uh, that w- that went to Oregon, and, and he's committed. Reed De'Anthony. is Oregon. De'Anthony, right. Uh, Reed is committed to Oregon. Right. But wow. it's, it's funny. I think about this when I saw uh, P. Carroll. When he talked about Reggie Bush, he said when he recruited him in high school, he said, I didn't know what to think about him. He said it was hard for me to recruit him because he said every time I saw a film, I didn't see anybody else in the, in the frame with him. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, and he just benefited from because he was such a talented running back. You know, I remember, uh, uh, you know, seeing Gabe, and I'm kind of dating myself there. I mean, the last guy I saw that was really uh, – uh, well, a couple guys that I saw that doing big things was David Dodson. Uh, you remember he, was, he went to uh, USC for a while without a, out of Valley View. And this guy was getting 500 yards a game. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other guy that, that comes to mind that, that, that special out of the running back position was uh, Toby Gerhardt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, I, you know, Another I, great. You know, and I remember up. him playing against North. And I just remember, like, everybody was talking about the kid. I'm going, there's no way this kid can do that. And he used to just carry. I mean, he would just carry kids. Uh-huh. You know, Henson playing in the NFL right now on Sundays. But that, now that, those are two backs right there we saw come out of the Inland Empire and could do some things. But this kid here. I tell you what, Coach B, I, I can see him playing Saturday afternoons uh, on Channel 7. Indeed, and he is, he is committed to the Oregon Ducks. 
And, and he's one of those players that I would say that's definitely going to get out on the field. And, and you know, the, the IE has had a history of putting out some special backs. Madison from uh, San Bernardino High School is playing at Boise. And J.J. Dynamite! Yes, Taylor. You he's know what I mean? in Arizona. And, 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 you know, any time the school is sending out video, highlight videos of you, that's something. Because generally it's, it's you. That's the yes. kid. You're the guy that's sending out. You know, the school is sending out highlight videos because this kid is this making uh, making uh, uh, players look ridiculous on yes. the football field. And uh, and we've seen it. We've seen uh, Dynamite. We did his first interview with him ever. And uh, the kid, uh, you know, he first was – First radio interview. Pardon. Excuse me. Uh, and, you know, and, and this was almost, you know, he backflipped over a kid in high school. <laughs> yeah. And, on a 90-yard uh, interception return. And don't forget the guy that he replaced was uh, uh, when he, when he went guns, up, right? Trey Watson up at, at Cal. So you look at some of the, uh, the, the talent that the, the Inland uh, Empire has put out, and, and they are in this Jalen Reed is going to be yet another player in that fine tradition of great running backs to come out of the, uh, the Inland Empire. No question about it, Kobe. So, I mean, it, it, it's great for us. I mean, we enjoy uh, getting a chance to kind of – give you guys the bird's eye view of what we're seeing right now and to kind of kind of bring you into the huddle and uh, let you know what's really going on out here in the field. And you, you think about it. When you think uh, Riverside County football, it was for years, it was Centennial, and then it was Norco going back and forth. And Centennial was kind of p- pulled away. Uh, and, and Vista Marietta, let's not forget about them. No question. But Centennial was kind of pulled away in Riverside. But you think about San Bernardino, I mean, you had Cajon that was dominant. Then you had Rev that was dominant. And then you had Rancho. And then you had – uh, colony, but it looks like Rancho is beginning to separate themselves as is maybe the uh, elite team of San Bernardino County. Well, and then you got to think, Coach B. They're doing this in the baseline league, so yeah, yes. there's, there's no question they're battle tested. That's what so, makes it special. Yeah, without a doubt. So when you're undefeated in the baseline league and you're doing this, you're putting up 35 points in the first quarter. And, you know, that's that's uh, that's telling. Yes, you know. Yes. Uh, uh, but but this, as you said, a lot. You know, and there's a, there's a lot of polls for whatever reason. A lot of polls that you know they say that they're doing you know the for polls for the Inland Empire, but you don't see you don't see a team like Rancho Cucamonga in there, which is beyond me. However, one thing you can do is when you visit iesportsnet.com, we take care of the entire Inland Empire, and we do mean that the entire high desert, mm-hmm. uh, 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 you know, and down the valleys, you know, in in the Temecula area, we bring it to you exactly. And and when you look at our poll on iesportsnet.com, the top five teams you had uh, you had number five was Norco, number four was Heritage. Number three was Marietta Valley. Number two were these Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. And number one were the big dogs, Corona Centennial. So now it looks like we're ready to kick All off. Right. And as we know, uh, Etiwanda kicked the ball off to start the game, and, and uh, Rancho fumbled. So now Etiwanda will get the ball. Etiwanda will get the ball first. So Rancho Cucamonga pops it. At, at about, so they, they, recover, they, they take the ball at about the uh, the. 25 yard line, and that looks like that was number 43 for Etiwanda, and 43 is going to be Edward Sacona. Yes, indeed. So now, so Rancho, or I'm sorry, Etiwanda is in business, so they're going to get the ball starting off at their own 25 yard line with 11 minutes and 56 seconds to go in the third quarter to start off. Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Uh, they they've kind of pulled away in this game. They're up thirty-five to three. We're in shotgun. You have t- you, there's been a change. Hummel number seven is at quarterback. We saw this last week, Coach B. Excuse me. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. Cashman in the backfield. Quick pitch to number eleven. He picks up five yards. He picks up he picks up about five yards on that play. So for Etiwanda, number eight, number eleven is going to be Devin Jenkins. So you look at so eleven minutes and forty seconds to go, so we're looking at the ball is spotted at about the 31-yard line for your Etiwanda Eagles, so we're looking at second down and about four. Yes, indeed, and one thing I could, I could say about this, Coach B, is right now what you're seeing uh, with that quarterback change is Helmer brings in a different dynamic. He can run the ball. He's, 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 he's not the number two rusher on the Etiwanda Eagles Cashmere, team. He picks, his eye, he picks up five yards. He picks up ten yards, 15 yards. Oh, my goodness. Way Cashmere was going. almost – he was almost there for a touchdown. Yeah, yes, indeed. And way to get – caught the edge right there, Coach B. Caught the edge and was able to twinkle toes and get 20 extra yards. Indeed he was. So, Etiwanda, they must have saw something at halftime, and they're excited. So, you're looking at 10 minutes and 50 seconds to go. 
you're looking at first and ten. They spotted the ball at about the – Wanda didn't even realize the ball was spotted that far up. Their huddle had to move. So Helmer gets the, Paul, the call from Coach Davis. He comes in. So you're looking at first and ten from exactly the 50-yard line with ten minutes and 51 seconds to go. Score 35-3. to Rancho Cucamonga Cougars lead the Etiwanda Eagles. And once again, he pitches it out. Oh, my goodness. He pitches it out, and that is an incomplete pass. Well, at least it wasn't a fumble. Woo! Yes, he was. He was uh, targeting number ten uh, for the Etiwanda for the Etiwanda Eagles. And and, and Coach B, I'm not going to attempt to say that. I, I, I work on it. It's Ola Kam- We're going to say Camu. Yes, Camu. Ola Sundui Akwe. <laughs> I believe that's his name. I'm not sure. Um, Please excuse us on that one. And, Thank and you, Coach B. I will look out. <laughs> Ten minutes and 48 seconds to go. It is second down and ten from the 50, and it is a read option. And uh, Dina keeps uh, – and, and Hamill hands the ball off, and he hands the ball off to uh, Cashmere Dina. Cashmere picks up about a yard on that play. And what you're seeing right now, Coach B, is again, and we talked about this, and I thought it was this uh, defensive line penetration. Coach Byers is sending the blitz in. He's having them come in from the DB position, and then you're also seeing a lot of it, uh, a penetration from the linebacker position. So he's not taking any chances, even up right now 32 points on the football game. Mm-hmm. So once again, you have Hummel in the shotgun. He has Cashmere with him, two, three receivers to his right, one to his left. And it seems like Rancho really isn't adjusted. Jordan Porter gets the, the pitch. He picks up about five or six yards. So now you're going to be looking at a fourth down and about four Coach Davis looks like he's sending Hamill back out. He's going to go for it. So you're looking at fourth down and about four. Well, you, it, it, it's Vegas time, Coach B. All the money's on the books right here, man. So you gotta you got to make it happen right now while you have it. So ten minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll see what happens. Uh, Coach Davis has his formation. He has Cashmere and Hamill in the shotgun. He has two receivers to his right, two receivers to the left. They're in the true spread formation. Davis saw, saw the defense, caught Bark in his play, and let's see what they got. And it is going to be an option, and nice. And it looks like Hamill kept it. I don't think he's going to get yeah. enough for the first Yeah, and that's down. a very short spot by the referee, at least on the inside. I don't know what they did on yeah on the outside of there. So they didn't make it, Coach B. So that's going to be a turnover on down. And, and, and you know what you saw right there with Justin Hamill. He, he, he was trying to get up the field, had a good first burst, but uh, but again, you know you're you're. Just de- I was just about to say, you're dealing with a very tight and, and talented uh, defensive unit, and they're able to make the stop. Indeed, indeed. So now, and, and, and Mr. Reed is still here. He still wants to play, and he trots out on the field. So you're looking at a first and ten. You have two receivers to your right, one to your left. You have a tight end now. You have Acosta and Reed in the backfield, and he hands it off to Reed. Reed gets about... I thought he was going to get a few more. It looks like Reed, because he's so deep in the shotgun, right. Reed picked up about a yard on that play. Yeah, and that's, that's a very good point, Coach, because before he even gets the ball, he's having to run five yards. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but now what I, what, I, what I do like about this, and I'm sure Coach Davis made this a focal point of his halftime speech, is working on tackling. You, exactly. gotta, you have to really be uh, focused on tackling this kid. So they're in the shotgun. And they are blitzing. They, they, they oh, and they, just, they, they, it was a drag route to number. Th- oh, what a stiff and arm! Just like I said right there, tackling. He got, whoa. And that's going to be Javion Lofton, who does a, a drag route across the middle, uh, and they cleared everybody out. And what you do is you have your receivers run vertical, so all your DBs are gone, and then you run that drag route, and it's one on one with that linebacker. And and give a lot of credit to Nick Acosta. You know, they, you know, when you run that screenplay, you're going to get a lot of pressure in your face. And he was able to maneuver and get outside the pocket, create a little bit more time, first and get and, the ball. First and ten, and he's going to read, and, oh. and he and he catches him. Thomas and, Graham Jr. I'm, I'm sorry, he goes to Thomas Graham Jr. He goes over the top, so that's going to be a 46-yard touchdown pass, and Acosta is not letting up. No, and let me tell you something. But, uh, that was a great pass by Acosta, but it was a better play by Thomas Graham Jr., a talented receiver, Coach B., because he was able to keep that defender on his hip mm-hmm. and get that football in there and take it all the way to the house without even being tackled, Coach B. That kid is special. Indeed he is. So Thomas Graham and Reed, those are the two, two dominant players on this team. There's no question about that, Coach B. So, and, you know, he goes both ways. So, I mean, you know, he's causing problems uh, for this other one the Eagles team tonight. So you're looking at the extra point. The extra point is up. The extra point is good. So 
the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars have stormed into Etiwanda, and they're up a score of 42-3 to with nine minutes and nine seconds to go in the third quarter. And I, I mean, Coach B, his foot is on the gas, and we're talking about Coach Bias for Rancho Cucamonga. No breaks. Yes, indeed, indeed. So now you're looking at, you're looking at a play. So you're looking at uh, Rancho is ready to kick the ball deep. Yes. So we will see what what uh, what uh, Edo wanted. You know they were moving the ball. Yeah, and we saw that. You know, and, and again, this is the second week that we've seen uh, uh, Hamill, uh, Justin Hamill, come in at quarterback and kind of create some uh, 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 create some uh, momentum for the Eagles team. It's similar to what you see in basketball when you have a second unit kind of come in. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. So they're ready to kick it off, and Rancho kicks from the forty, and they kick it deep this time. So number. six. Six for Etiwanda, and that's going to be Andre Grayson. Gets it. It's a reverse. Oh, and, and they were ready for it. He, he Maybe he should have kept that. And that was Porter. It was a reverse to Porter, and Porter got the ball to about the 11-yard line. Yeah, and see, sometimes when you're running, and I know the coaches are are, are telling you to, to run those plays, you have to you have to use some kind of discretion, I believe, sometimes, because to me, I think uh, 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 number six, Andre Grayson should have kept that ball right there. Maybe he, he could have got about 20 more yards of the field. That's what at least would look like for my, my We position. saw him take one to the house like you said last week. There's no question about that. So he's got the speed. I'm about to say the ability is there. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. So Hamill is still in the, in the game. He's in the shotgun. He has Cashmere Deer in the backfield with him in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right, and we'll see what they're going to do. And he hands it off to Cashmere. They have a great seal on the edge. But, my goodness, flying out of nowhere for Rancho Cucamonga was number three. Uh, number three for Rancho Cucamonga, and that's going to be David Farmer. Yeah, and David Farmer, Coach B, a senior DB, 160 pounds, uh, came around that corner, Coach B, and made a great play. That was play. your DB yeah, flying up like that? I mean, with, with no regard, Coach B. I mean, they're, they're talented. Wow. And you think about it, the DB is 20 year, yards off the line. Yeah, you would think. But they, they play – they. It looks like, what, just from my perspective, they're playing some type of cover two. You see uh, two defensive backs, two, uh, two, uh, two deep safeties, and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're pressing uh, on at least one side of the ball. And they're in the shotgun once again when Hamill. Now he has three receivers bunched to the left, and he fake play, and he goes to Porter, and Porter, there is a, a ton of Cougars there waiting for him. And on that play, it looks like Porter maybe picked up maybe two or three yards. Yeah. So, Which is my opinion, Coach B. It, it seems like you don't see a lot of tight end play, and I think that would probably be an area where Coach Davis could really, you know, help his quarterback out a little bit is get that tight end out there in the middle because, you know, they're doing a lot of east and west, mm-hmm. but, you know, got to do a little bit more north and south. So it's third down and about eight to go uh, with seven minutes, 36, seven, seven 37 seconds ago, the ball is spotted on their own 13-yard line. So you have Hamill in the gun. He has three receivers to his right, one to his left, and it's a handoff. No, it's a fake, and he rolls out, and he hits. He hits on number that 11. play, number 11, but he caught the ball diving to the ground, number 11. Devin be, Jennings. And, and in high school, when you catch the ball and hit the ground, you that's can't it. get up. Yeah, that's they it. Gave him, did they give him a first down? Gave him a first down on that play Good right play. there. Yeah, great play by that. De- Again, second time we've seen Devin Jennings go in. Stop and, uh, you know, make a target, you know, be a target for his quarterback, but behind the sticks. And, and, you know, and when you're a receiver's coach, that's all you can ask for out of your player. And that comes from being a senior. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he's a senior. So now you got, again, Hamels in the gun. He has number 20 in the backfield with him, and that's going to be A.J. Williams. And he keeps the oh, ball. Oh, Hamill. And Hamill is Justin going. Hamill. He's, oh, he's past the 20. He's to the 40. He may go. He's to the 20. He's to the 15. And Hamill, that was about a 60-yard run for number seven, Hamill. It was a read option keeper, and that and you see everybody on the other one of the signs getting fired up. Hey, you need something. And wait, and again, Coach Davis has been really good at creating some sparks for him uh, in the second half, and, they, and you've seen that being done by uh, having Hamill come into the football game. Exactly. So with six minutes and 45 seconds to go, Ed one is in business. They have the ball at Rancho's 18-yard line. So six minutes forty five seconds ago, the score is forty two three, and indeed. Etiwanda is knocking. Yeah, and and, and you're, you're seeing Hamill, Justin Hamill, uh, come into the football game and really get these guys a lift. Almost interception on that play. He tried to hit number eleven on that play, 
uh, that was that was close. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and, and there is a different uh, element with arm talent between the different quarterbacks. Uh, but one thing you can say, Justin Hamill has the intangibles, Coach B. Mm-hmm. Has, you know, he comes in the game, has command, gets the ball out, is definitive, and you see he's making some moves uh, for the Edwana Eagles football team. Indeed, indeed, I agree. And this is one thing you got to like about high school football. They have the, the cheerleaders running around with the flags. You only see that in Friday Night Lights. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hamill's in the gun, three receivers to his left. Oh. And that was a play. He was targeting number 15, Hunter Black, and that was an incomplete pass on second down. So yeah. now, it's just to me, Coach B, with that play right there, you need another option mm-hmm. because you don't look, give your quarterback a lot of options right there. See, if, that, if the DB cr- comes down on that screen play there, you have to, you have to, you got to go to a different option, maybe a tight end or something. Right now, I don't really see that happening. So when that play crashes, they're they're losing yards. So now you're looking at third and ten from the uh, 23-yard line for the Etiwanda Eagles. In the shotgun, you have back out there is Kashmir, Dina, and Hummel, and that was another high snap. And on that play, it, 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 was, it was blown up. Yeah, and, and, and one thing about this Rancho Cucamonga team, again, they're precise. You can't mess up. They're you, know, quick. Uh, 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 you know, a high snap puts you in a very vulnerable position, and we've seen that on multiple occasions. So now you're fourth down and about 14 to go. Uh, the ball is spotted at the 23-yard line, and Coach Davis is going to go. Yeah, right now at this point, Coach, be second half. You're down. You know, you're, you're down 39 points. You got to start taking some rest. True spread formation: three receivers to your left, one to your right. Empty backfield. Hamill's the only one back there, so they're going to spread them out. And he's going up top. He's going, and that is it is blocked up at the last oh, minute wow. and intercepted. And, and he brought it out, Coach B, which I think was, was a little mistake right there. And that was Graham. And he, he caught, he intercepted the ball in the end zone, and, and that's the play you just take a knee. You take a knee. But Graham is so, you know, he's, he, again, for him, I don't really know that I, three touchdowns, or two touchdowns on the day, Coach B, two interceptions, it's, uh, it's tough. So with five minutes and 47 seconds to go, Rancho Cucamonga is in business. They have the ball. Anytime they, they spotted the ball at the two-yard line. Oh, so yeah. Anytime Rancho Cucamonga gets the ball, they're in business. Yeah, and that's what's crazy about it. Normally you would, you, you would, you would condemn a player for doing that, but right now, I mean, they have the speed and the gifts where they can get out of trouble uh, at the blink of an eye, Coach B. Indeed they can. So with five minutes, 47 seconds to go, up 42 to 3, Acosta is back out there, and it looks like he has the always electric Jalen Reed. They are in the end zone, so they've got to be careful here. Yeah, they, yeah. So this is and, – and, and he spreads out Jalen Reed. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, he, he, Jalen, he spreads him out, and Acosta, he's looking, and he, he, he's a quick little pitch to number eight, and that's uh, – I'm sorry, number 48 for Rancho Cucamonga, and that's going to be David Port. And, again, what I like about what I'm seeing about their offense right now, multiple options for the quarterback in case he gets in trouble. So he was able to check down. They were looking for Jalen Reed on that right there, but he was able to check down and get the ball to his tight end and still make positive yards. Indeed, indeed. So you look at now you're looking at second and about six. The ball is now spotted at the seven at their own seven-yard line. So now five minutes and 14 seconds to go. Acosta's in the backfield, and he hands the ball off to on that play. And oh, my goodness, he fought for every yard on that play, and that's Jalen Reed. And I tell you, it is nearly impossible to tackle that guy. No question about it, Coach B. And, and right now what they're seeing, uh, uh, you're seeing a special – Running back, uh, and this again, like, again, what I like about him, Coach B, has all the intangibles. Can run the ball, uh, is able to catch the ball out of the backfield, has exceptional breakaway speed. So Acosta's in the backfield, and he's getting pressure, and that was it. And on that play, that's one good thing. They got pressure on him, and it was an incomplete pass but on it, that play. But again, he's he's unfazed, Coach B. The, the kid's only a junior. Uh, his second, it really, is only his, this is his first year. Wait, wait, excuse me. Yeah, this is his, he was a freshman last year. Didn't start. First year now, actually starting for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, and it really has a lot of really good, to me, quarterback presence in the pocket. So Acosta's in the backfield. He has Reed back there with him. He has three receivers to his right. Uh, it looks like he has a tight end out there. So he hands the ball off. Like we said, that delayed handoff, it's, it's a draw uh, on that play. And Reed, just like that, he picks up five yards. You know, no question about it, Coach B. And, and he has been a machine for Rancho Cucamonga. Gets the ball, Coach B, and, and when he gets it, Count five yards. 
Indeed. So four minutes and 30 seconds to go, hence him wearing the number five, correct? There's no doubt about it, Coach Ben. Again, he comes into the game with over 1,062 yards and on that was six games. Yeah. <laughs> so you look at it, Acosta's right. in the backfield with Reed. He fakes the handoff to him, and Acosta rolls out. He can throw the ball on the run. Hits wow. number four. He gets about 20 yards. Can they tackle him? They finally tackle him, and number four is going to be Tyree Baker, and Tyree picks up about 30 yards on that play. No doubt about it, Coach B. And, again, this quarterback, Coach B, I'm, I'm impressed. Nick Acosta comes out of there. When he rolls out, Coach B, his head is up the field looking at his receivers, and he doesn't have a problem checking down if necessary. Indeed. Indeed he does not. So you're now, so now they are north of the 50. The ball is spotted at the 48-yard line. It's first and 10. Costas in the backfield has Reed back there. With, hands it off to him. He gets, and just Ooh, like that, he gets five yards. He gets 10 yards. He Oh, he Ooh. fumbles. It's, it's a fumble. Well, out of bounds. <laughs> fortunately, he fumbled out of bounds. And like you said, it looks like he did get slapped across the face. Yeah. And, Coach B, it, again, he's able to uh, – he just, again, has a really – his field presence is, is something, Coach B, because he knows when players are coming. He makes a spin move right there. And uh, generally speaking, you know, it, you know, hasn't lost the ball at all for the Cougars today. He did fumble. He went out of bounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but, he, again, he had really good ball control as well. And Justin Alexander comes in for Jalen Reed, and that's probably the best defense for him is the sideline. Yeah. So <laughs> in the backfield, hands it off to, uh, Look to at that. Alexander. I'm sorry, Alexander comes in for Reed, and Alexander picked up. He ran about 15 yards to get back to the line of scrimmage. He, he, he went to the right, didn't see anything yet. They tried to cut back right into the heart of the defense. And, Coach B, they're, uh, they're three deep at the running back position. And, and, you know, when you look at these running backs, even the backup could start for anybody. Exactly. So you're looking at Acosta's in the shotgun, three receivers to his right, one to his left. He has... Uh, uh, Alexander in the backfield. He fakes, and he's going over the top. Wide and open wide again. open is number 15, and that's going to be Joey Frias, and that's going to be a touchdown. So that is a 37-yard touchdown pass. I don't know how many yards Acosta has passing tonight, but I guarantee you it's a lot. There's no doubt. And, Coach, this is the third time we've seen a receiver break away and be wide open in Etiwan to secondary. Uh, obviously some, some, some major issues to, to, to fix. Indeed, indeed. So with three minutes and nine seconds to go, Rancho Cucamonga, they are still playing some football. There's no, doubt, there's no doubt about it. And somebody has to let them know that they're up convincingly in this football game. Indeed. So with three minutes and nine seconds to go, the score is 48-3. to three. Rancho, uh, Rancho Cucamonga, the, the extra point is up. The extra point is good. And there's going to be a rough and uh, uh, there's going to be a personal foul on this play right here for trying to Blocked the field goal, and Coach Davis is not happy about it. Indeed. So, Rancho Cucamonga is still here. They're still playing. Uh, Etiwanda win, as we said, they went on the board first with a score of 3-0, to zero, but Rancho Cucamonga only responded with 49 un unanswered Answered. points. Good call, good, good, good call there, Coach B, because, and again, it's not like uh, the Eagles haven't had some opportunities. Uh, they've had opportunities, but, again, for whatever reason, a lot of it has to be, you know, you've got, you got to give these Cougars credit They've been able to play some really good football, Coach B, and, uh, and, and you know, and, and again, they've been able to capitalize on some huge mistakes from the Etiwanda Eagles football team. I agree. So with three minutes and nine seconds to go, Etiwanda is deep, and you said that penalty was called, so we'll see where it's going to be assessed on the kickoff. Yeah, no doubt about it. It looks like they're going to march it up right now. Yeah. So they might as well just go ahead and spot the ball at the 20. Uh, because well, they better hope so. Yeah, so Rancho is going ahead and kick the ball off. Looks like they're going to kick the ball off at the, uh, at the 45 yard line. So, so this might, he, he might even kick it through the uprights. Yeah. Uh, kicking it this far up. Hey, well, the hardest working man in football, he could kick it from the uprights right here. So it, it is a kickoff. No, he kind of he kind of pooch punt, a pooch punt. So it was picked up by number eight. And he got to wait for his block. Oh, he he has some blockers. He's at twenty. He's to the twenty five, and he was he was uh, tackled by number sixteen on that play. Great play by number sixteen, and that's going to be that's Octavius Arden, or Arden Ardines, but uh. uh so that's going to be number sixteen for for Rancho. That made the stop. I oh, made the stop. Yeah, okay. okay. I was going like, I was like, no, no, not at all, sir. Uh, no, good call on that, Coach B. Again, yeah. really, uh, you know, and right now you're seeing uh, uh, Coach Bynes. I mean, again, uh, just a lot of talent, Coach B. And, uh, you know, hence why they're number two in the uh, Inland Empire, IE Sportsnet, 11-man uh, football ball. Seth Oaks made that. So, 
Uh, again, uh, number seven, Hamill's in the backfield, and he ma- he picks up, he does the read option, keeps the ball. DB. And he picked up, it looks like they're going to give him three yards on that on that uh, play. But I don't know if you want him continuously running. He took a shot yeah, at yeah. the end of that run. Uh, David Farmer on the tackle, uh, 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 well, Farmer uh, on the tackle, Coach B. And these DBs, and he's playing at the safety position, Coach B. And he came up and gave uh, Hamill a shot. So Hamill's in the shotgun. He has number 20 in the backfield with him. That's going to be A.J. Williams. He has two receivers to his right, two receivers to his left. He's in the true shotgun formation. So Hamill, oh, my goodness, it was a snap over his head. Uh, Good play by number 25 just getting down on it. And that was recovered by the Eagles, and that's going to push them back to the 15-yard line. So that it's going to be third and forever. And we've seen uh, this has been uh, this has been – Something that we've seen has troubled the Eagles is play from their center position. Um, and, and again, you know, we've seen this on multiple weeks. Where you know, we've seen a, you know a lot of high snaps, and so this is something that Coach uh, Davis, I'm sure, is going to take some time with and have to shore that up. So one minute and 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. Uh, Rancho Cucamonga uh, Cougars lead the Eagles 49 to three. Hamels in the backfield is another high snap. Hamel keeps it on that play. So Coach Davis and the Etiwanda Eagles would like to thank Hector Carnival from uh, Executive Protection for, for, for providing today's game meal, Eagle He's, Pride. Yeah, Eagle Pride. He said they, they came out really did a, uh, really did a, a solid thing for those players, so they're excited about that. One thing I want to tell Hector Carnival is I didn't get my <laughs> meal. So <laughs> Come on, out of Hector. <laughs> but you know what? One thing we can say is thank big shout-out to the uh, Etiwanda Eagles. Elisa. Uh, Elisa, they yeah. did hook us up. Got, got us my gator. pizza. I didn't get my hot dog. No, no, you didn't. But I got some. But pizza. you know, but per your request, you got got you a nice little macho burrito pizza or something, man. Yeah, all kind of, all kind of hog on that. Diego Garcia punts the ball, booming punt, and the ball dribbles down to a great punt. It takes the Etiwanda Eagles roll, and it stopped, and it, it is down at about the forty-seven yard line. In this game, Coach B, they will take every Etiwanda inch they can get. And with 47 seconds to go in the third quarter, we want to go ahead and thank Chili's of North Fontana. Get your baby back. Real mm. proud sponsors of Etiwanda Eagles football and Massage Envy. Relaxation is now in session. A proud sponsor of Etiwanda Eagles. And as we said before, we want to thank thanks so much because tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Fontana Rotary Club, Fontana Mayor Aquanetta Warren, Fontana City Council Member Tahan and Second District San Bernardino County Supervisor Janice Rutherford. So we had a change at quarterback. Number nineteen hands the ball off, and that's going to be nuts. That's going to be Stroud, Coach B. And he's coming in right now. CJ CJ Stroud, uh, and I want to say he is a freshman. Well, let me see something here. Cause they said because Coach Bias said he was yeah, a freshman. Yeah, he is a freshman. Yeah. So they said he brought him up. He said he's a freshman, Coach B. And uh, kids, tall, tall kid. Uh, you know, looks. They don't, they don't have the stat. They don't have his stats here. But he's a he's a tall kid from at least what we can see here, and uh, and and Coach Byers was pretty high on it. He said, "Hey, they, this kid can play." Yes, CJ. Uh, they marched the ball down. It looks like there was a a penalty on the play. Uh, so when you look at it, uh, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars are in business. They have the ball at the twenty five yard line now. So they are marching. So, like you said, C.J., he is a big boy. C.J. Stroud. So he's in the backfield with number 24, and that's going to be Justin Alexander. C.J. Quit does a quick pitch out wow. at five yards. And, my goodness, they have some speed. Who is that kid? That's number 23, and, and that's uh, Boss Price, Coach B. And this kid has some – He, I mean, he has some wheels. So Rancho is going to be scary for some years to come. Yeah. <laughs> They are loaded over there, man. I mean, the coach told me they have they have uh, uh, they have ten receivers over there, Coach B. Everybody wants to play. So CJ's in the gun, and it's second and about a yard. He hands the ball off. What a shake! Man. My goodness. So he picks up. So it was <laughs> second and one at the twenty-five, and they pick up enough for that first down with ten seconds to go in the third quarter. And Coach B, normally when you see a change of running back like that. You, you know, you get a, you know, you know, generally you gasp and you go, okay, okay, finally we get a little break here. No breaks for the Edwanda Eagles football team. They're just so loaded at each position, especially the skill position, it's causing problems. And, 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 and from the score, it's been a problem for the Eagles all night. Indeed, indeed. So you look at, uh, it's a time, actually that's the end of the third quarter. But the so, four's up. 
So now it's, we're going into the fourth quarter. So you have a score of 49-3. to three. The Rancho Cucamonga Cougars lead the home Etiwanda Eagles tonight. Indeed. So the fourth and final quarter uh, coming coming your way shortly. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. And, uh, you know, and right here what we've seen uh, since the opening whistle uh, outside of the Etiwanda Eagles field goal has just been dominance from the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Indeed. Remember the final of Etiwanda Eagles football on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get to know your Eagles. Remember, it's Eagle Pride. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, going into that fourth and final quarter, C.J. Stroud, it looks like Acosta, Acosta led them through, and uh, there's been no let off when you look at C.J. coming out. There's been, no, no, none whatsoever. And, 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 again, that's just a testament to Coach Byers and what he's been able to do over there at, at, at with this talented group. Uh, because, you know, just because you have talent doesn't mean you're going to come out here on Friday nights and perform. Indeed. You know, you've got to coach him up, and he's doing a good job of that. Good example would be uh, the Cowboys. So oh, now wow. you're looking at oh, CJ wow. in the shotgun, three receivers to his left. He First. hands off to number 24, and 24 gets blasted on that yes, play. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Make sure you put some respect on that first place, Cowboys. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. Coach B, just want to make sure we say this uh, to, to the folks real quick. Hey, uh, um, uh, we're live tomorrow morning. If you guys want to get your scores uh, uh, talked about uh, on the air, use the hashtag IE Sportsnet or use our handle at IE Sportsnet, and uh, we can get it in. So, finally, we got the, the stats on CJ. He's a 6'2 freshman. 185, yes. child kid, and he's ready to rock. He's in the gun, hands off to number 24, and he is dancing. So number 24 for the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars is going to be Justin Alexander, and Justin is a junior. So I'll tell you, next year when you have you have Acosta coming back, you have CJ coming back, you have Alexander coming back, there's going to be no drop off of talent. There's no doubt about it. Is and that's you know and for for anybody, uh, Coach Davis included, uh, anybody in the baseline league, uh, that has to be a little hunting. So 10 minutes and 55 seconds to go. The ball is spotted at the nine. You're looking at third down. Oh, my. You have someone. Oh, he made a – what a great tackle, A, a open field tackle by number 17 for the Etiwanda Eagles. And that's going to be Jerome Wilson, Coach B. Came in, made a great – and Jerome Wilson has made some great plays today. And they have him at wide receiver as his, as his natural position. Uh, but something must have happened, and they got him locked in over here. Uh, on the defensive backfield now, and I think he might need to stay there. Great thing about Jerome, he's only a sophomore. Yeah, I saw that, Coach, be a young kid, so he can play. So he's a six-foot sophomore, 178 pounds. Great-looking kid. And that's one thing that Etiwanda can be excited about. When you look at a lot of their players, their players are they have they play a lot of sophomores and juniors. Yeah, for good reason right now. And just as you said, it takes a coach roughly about three years to get his players in, into the game, but at least in the high school. Right. So, so you're, you're, you're going to start seeing that. Right. So the, the, uh, the Cougars and no decide to go for a field goal. Field goes up, field goal is good. So the Cougars will go up a score of 52-3 to three with nine minutes and 48 seconds to go with, uh, with Rancho Cucamonga. So, so you're looking at a score. Uh, on that score. And one thing we want to talk to you about as well is, is when you look at it, and we talk about, let's talk about Thursday football. Hey. So the Etiwanda Eagles locked up with the JV and freshman team both coming out victorious over these uh, Rancho Cucamonga Cougars. Coach B, and I heard some kid <laughs> with a head full of hair. Uh, the video's a little shaky, uh, but, you know, Coach B's out there, he's a proud father, got a chance to see B.J. Yeah, uh, excuse me, I said B.J. Jr., young Brian Jr. Yeah. Go out there and do some things, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be seeing him on Friday Night Lights real soon, Coach B. Indeed, so that's one thing you got to think about. What Coach Davidson, uh, I, I had a chance, they had career day here yeah. uh, last Wednesday. They they invited IE Sportsnet to come out and speak and present. I had a good chance to talk to Coach Davis. We talked for a little while, and he's excited about it. He can hang his hat on this. His freshman team is 7-1, and one, and his uh, JV team is 6-2. and two. And, yeah, and uh, Rancho decides to pooch punt it, and Etiwanda recovers it, and they uh, they spot the ball would be spotted about the thirty five yard line. So, like we said, when I talked to Coach Davis Wednesday, that's one thing that he can hang his hat on. He was pretty excited about it, is his freshman like the team is seven and one, JV is uh, six and two, and you got to think about it. Like you said, this is Coach Davis' second year here at uh, Etiwanda High School, going into his third and fourth year. Those will be kids that weren't coached by anybody else. Yeah, no doubt about it. And so, and then you're going to start to see his footprint uh, on his football team. And you know, and I think, I think, I think the Etiwanda faithful will be pretty, 
pretty excited about it. I mean, I like what he's doing here. I mean, you know, you know, right now, you're dealing with a lot of talent. You're, I mean, these, these the, the teams you're playing are some of the best in San Bernardino County, which is, by the way, the largest county in these these United States of America. So we had a change at quarterback, number 18, Sean Murphy. Uh, he's committed to West Point, so that's a that's a want to honor that kid. I mean, going to West Point, my God. Yeah, hats off. Uh, he may cure cancer one day. So it was a handoff. He was under center, handed the ball off to number 25. That was Jacob Hillstock. So it looks like Coach Davis is putting in – he's adjusting his lineup. Handoff once again to number 25. Rancho is still playing. They're still playing. They're still playing. I was tough. about to say, the clock is still rolling, Coach B. Yes, so with 7 minutes, 25 seconds to go, you were at second and one, and there was a stop at that. So you're looking at a third down at about five now. Yeah, Coach B, and then you're, you're seeing – you see, you're just seeing uh, the dominance, and, and, and if I'm if I'm in the baseline league, or if I got to line up and play against uh, Coach Bynes and these uh, Cougars, I mean, I'm I'm losing sleep at night. I, indeed, indeed, and that's the baseline league. They, uh, it's tough every single week. Every single week is tough. No doubt about it. Talented group, talented so, group here. Murphy's under center. He's rolling to his right, and he's passing. And he hey. hits number 85. Nice little pickup. I Got like the that. first down. And, and, and look, I like the command. He came out there, in a, and, you know, little, decent little slingshot. Got the ball out. Indeed. Indeed. And, and, and what I like to see, Coach B, is what I like there is the, on the bootleg, kept his head up, uh, you know, uh, looking upfield. And, and went with progression and found the right receiver. And that's what I, out of a quarterback, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see the, a kid going and eyeballing the receiver all the way downfield, especially with this Rancho Cucamonga group. These kids will take that thing and they'll run all the way back on it. They'll take it back to the house. Indeed. And, and, put it, and put it up. They'll have no problem with doing that at all whatsoever. So Murphy's in the back. He hands it off to number 25. A nice little stiff arm. stiff arm. Nice little stiff arm. He ran about 10 yards and picked up about a yard or two on that play. Yeah, as you, as you said, Coach B, really good stiff arm right there on the outside. Uh, but, but again, you know, running east and west uh, against this Rancho Cucamonga team, good luck with that. And like we said, the, uh, the freshman squad yesterday, they, they won a score of 37-20 to 20 over these Rancho Cucamonga Cougars, and the JV squad really took it to them. 52 to 36. I think Coach Byers got worried about that, and that's why. He put <laughs> so <laughs> no, we're gonna get 52 tonight. So you look at it at second and about nine. Murphy's in the backfield, hands it off to number 22 on this play, and on that play, number 22 is going to be Walter Washington, a senior running back. Well, hey, you know, you're seeing some, uh, you're, you're seeing them going through, and like I said, uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to the kid Starks. Uh, showed a lot of uh, heart today, at least dressed out. Um, but, was, again, wasn't able to go. He's really been fighting it with that uh, high ankle sprain, and uh, hopefully he'll be ready to go uh, next week. So Walter Washington is a senior running back, 5'6", goes about 167. So now you're looking at third down and about 10 on this play. Uh, so Murphy's still in the backfield. He's in the shotgun, has one receiver to his back. And, and Murphy goes to number 81. Nice little play. And he picks up, it looks like he's going to pick up, he targeted number 81 on that play, and it looks like he's going to get a first down. So 81 I like, is Mark Perry, a sophomore. Yeah, I like what I, excuse me, Coach B, I, I like what I see out of, uh, out of uh, number 18, Shane Murphy at quarterback. Uh, again, I see the progression. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a small sample size right now because, you're, again, you're playing against, uh, you know, uh, your, your, your second-tier players. Um, but, again, I, li- I like what I see out of, out of this kid. Indeed. So it's fourth and two, and Davis said, hey, let's roll the dice. He, sh- he sh- sends Murphy back out. Murphy's under the gun. He has number 22, and that's going to be Walter Washington. Again, d- dive straight up the middle, and it looks like he may have the momentum. Depends on where they spot it. That's going to be really close, and it looks like they, they-, they gave him the first down. So with three minutes and 56 seconds to go, Edouan has finally got something going. So it's going to be first and 10. The ball is going to be spotted at the 30. Uh, it's uh, third, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars lead the Etiwanda Eagles a score of 52 to three. And that's what you want to see out of your, out of your running back, uh, number 25, Hillstock, uh, Jacob Hillstock, put his head down and got the yards, coach. Indeed. So you look at it, and that's number 22 for them for Ooh. the Eagles. Oh man, he took a shot. And number 22 is going to be Walter Washington. Uh, so we'll see what they can continue to do as they continue to move this ball and march on the field. We'll see can they punch it in. Uh, before the night's over. And that was Aaron Bass on the tackle for Rancho Cucamonga, Coach B. Came from the safety position and, I mean, was able to make a walloping hit. 
uh, right there near the line of scrimmage, Coach B, and that's what you want out of your strong safety. And, boy, do they have speed on the edge here oh, my goodness. with these Cougars. They look like Cougars out there. Hey, so, no. Murphy is in the backfield. He has Washington in the backfield with him. has two receivers to his left, one to his right. And there's right. a flag. It looks like that's going to be a false start. Okay. Oh, well, offside. No. He's calling no. him offside, Coach. Oh, wow. Wow. So, that's the, the old encroachment. Yeah. So, that, was, that must have been a neutral zone. Yeah, Possibly. neutral zone infraction. Infraction, yeah. So, you're looking at second and about four with two minutes and 36 seconds to go for Etiwanda. Let's see if they can get it in the end zone. Murphy's in the backfield, two receivers to his left, two to his right. He has Washington in, the, in backfield. It's a quick pitch to number 19. He picks up five yards, ten yards. So, he gets the ball down to about the 15-yard line. That's Nick Cassidy that he pitched that ball out to. And Nick Cassidy is a senior. He goes about 5'11", 160 pounds. Two minutes and 14 seconds to go. Coach B, I haven't seen the Eagles uh, take this kind of command all night. Uh, so, you know, if I, you know, if I'm Coach Davis, you know, I'm taking a really good look at this last drive here and seeing if maybe we can kind of, you can infuse uh, some of this momentum going forward. Indeed, indeed. So you're looking at a, it's going to be a first and 10. The ball is spotted about the 12-yard line. Three series to your left, one to your right. Murphy and Washington in the backfield. And that is it. Oh, wow, what a catch. Touchdown for the Etiwanda Eagles, number 19, Nick Cassidy. And Etiwanda gets in the end zone. Hey, and that's what you want. And Nick Cassidy made a great offensive play by just by being the aggressor, taking the ball, got through a couple arm tackles, Coach B, and got in for the Etiwanda Eagles. First touchdown for, for the night for Coach Davis and his Eagles. And I know he's pretty excited about that, uh, even though the game's already in the, uh, you know, in the books. So Diego Garcia is out for the extra point. So with one minute and 16 seconds to go, uh, we'll see if Diego it is up and the extra point is good for the Etiwanda Eagles. Yes. So Etiwanda scored first, and it looks like they may be one to, to score last, but Rancho did a lot <laughs> in the middle. No, no question about that. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, as you said, it may, it may, this, this looks like it may be a situation where they got the first and the last score of the game. Uh, but as you, as you mentioned, uh, Rancho Cucamonga took care of business in the middle of the game and really kind of uh, uh, made this game out of reach early. Yes, and it looks like they, in the fourth quarter we've, run, we've played with a running clock, so we have about 40 seconds to go yeah. in the fourth and final quarter for the, uh, the Etiwanda ver Eagles versus the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars in the battle for the city of Rancho Cucamonga. As we said before, Rancho Cucamonga is already taking care of Los Osos, uh, and now by de- defeating uh, the Rancho, uh, the Etiwanda Eagles, it looks like they're going to take the city, the city championship for two, 2016. And I just want to give a shout out to all the good folks listening at home. We thank you guys and appreciate you guys uh, allowing us to take over your evening. And we want to say thank you to the Stater Brothers, a proud sponsor for Etiwanda Eagles football, serving Southern California um, since 1936. Stater Brothers and also Team Physical Therapist, you uh, Team. Team Physical Therapy, you see there, you'll see there's a difference of proud sponsors of Etiwanda Eagles football. And, of course, we want to go ahead and thank Fontana Rotary Club. Fontana Rotary Club, Fontana is a city of action, and the Fontana Rotary is no exception. Visit them online at www.fontanarotary.org or Mayor Fontana, uh, Fontana Mayor Warren. Uh, make sure you visit her online. Keep Fontana moving forward as well as... Fontana City Council member Michael Tahan. Visit him at www.tahanforfontana.com. Keep Fontana moving forward. And 2nd District San Bernardino County Supervisor Janice Rutherford. Yes. Visit her at www.sbcounty.gov forward slash Rutherford. What a game tonight. And that'll do it, folks, man. So again, we thank you guys, man. A great game. Great. Well, I'm really glad I was able to see uh, uh, Jaden Phillips and Thomas Graham Jr. up close tonight. They put on a show, man. Nick Byers and his, his team, there's something to be reckoned with. I'm really excited that Lisa was able to get me that pizza. There's no doubt about it. We had, Thank you for that. And got me some nachos and hooked us up nice, some Gatorade, and uh, really good job. want to say a spe- special shout-out to Michelle Gardner who was up here in the booth with us. And I heard she said her husband had a, uh, an accident tonight, so we want to wish him a speedy recovery. Exactly. So, Michelle, will be calling us in the morning to talk about some baseline league, and I'm sure she's going to call us in the morning uh, on i.e. Sports Net on Fox Sports 1350, and I'm sure this game will be a part of the conversation. No question about that. And, and you know, and she, can, she gave us some comments. I, I won't let, her, I won't let her, though these, the comments be heard tonight because I, you know, I want you guys to stay tuned tomorrow. Uh, but uh, she, she understands. She knows the climate here. So 
So uh, big shout out to Michelle Gardner. Does a great job for Inland Empire Sports. Indeed, she does. So we want to thank everybody so much for listening and tuning in once again to the Fox Sports High School Game of the Week. Game of the Week. Called by your my IE Sports Net co-host Eternal, and I am Coach B. This broadcast is a production of Etowanda High School in association with IE Sportsnet and Fox Sports 1350 AM. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Etowanda High School is prohibited. The opinions expressed on this broadcast are not necessarily those of Fox Sports 1350, IE Sportsnet, or Etowanda High School. So, coming to you directly from Etowanda Eagle Stadium in the city of Rancho Cucamonga, along with my co-host, Eternal, I am Coach B, saying so long from Etowanda Eagle Stadium in Rancho Cucamonga, reminding you of tonight's score, Etowanda 10, the Rancho Cucamonga Cougars 52. Hey. What a game. So, Tune in tomorrow morning to IE Sports Day on Fox Sports 1358 in the morning with Coach B and the one and only Eternal. So Good night, folks. We are ready to go. So let's do it. So once again, thank you for listening to Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week with Coach B. And Eternal, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, you know the conversation starts and it stops here live on Fox Sports. 1350 a.m. You are tuned into the new home for IE Sportsnet every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. with Coach B. And Eternal, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, the conversation starts and stops here. On Fox Sports Radio, 1350 a.m. IE Sportsnet every Saturday morning, 8 a.m.